Good morning, welcome to uh, RAF for departures day from Royal International Air Sassu. Thank you so much for um, those of you that have tuned in for all of our coverage of Air Sassu, both arrivals and the show weekend proper over on uh, PTV On Demand, our streaming website. I've seen a, a flurry of emails coming in this morning saying well done and thank you for the coverage. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. It's been challenging at times, there's some interesting weather. It's been wet and windy. It has, and, but we've got the sun out at the moment. And fairly low cloud, but that's not going to affect anyone. Yeah, um, it, it has been a memorable few days um, yes. for, a, for a number of reasons. And I will, uh, I will recall being up here on this platform roof on Saturday, blasted by a 40 knot wind um, and the you know, almost painful rain. I'll remember that for a long time. Yeah, quite. And um, the challenges that's presented for the organisers, both the show sites, you know, worried, worried about wind and rain and people you know, being safe in, in the environment um, is quite something. And then, of course, the flying display has, has impacted that. But I think over the course of the rehearsals and a show weekend proper, we've kind of got everything yeah. we hoped for. Yeah. Maybe Meteor was a... Everything, nothing has not flown because of weather reasons, if you take into account the Wednesday and the Thursday as well. I mean, and the, in, the only thing that hasn't flown due to weather on the public uh, weekend has been the Royal Jordanian Falcons. So that's we have had pretty much on. everything. And we're looking anxiously out to the west there because we can hear Rosas turning. I think one of the early departures expected to be in Mangusta, but I can hear Chinook over there, I think. That's Chinook noise, if ever it was. Um, and we'll be bringing you those, so as soon as we can see an aircraft uh, taken to the sky, uh, I can see a rotor now actually, so I'll hop on the camera. Um, and a reminder that, yeah, so we're anxious about covering everything because we are producing an edited programme uh, which will go out on the streaming service as well. Um, so for those of you that have signed up for access to the live broadcast, that will be available to you. Oh, I can just see a rotor sneaking out there. It's quite close actually, it's run on the closer taxiway to us rather than right down the end there. Um, yeah, so getting getting everything in the bag over the course of the arrivals and show weekend proper is kind of important to us. And, and of course it's worth mentioning as well that we've had someone running around collecting GoPro material as well. Yep. So some onboard um, material we've had displays. you and Lee and Ben running around getting some uh, lovely slow motion gimbal footage of people crewing in and crewing out and static display aircraft taxiing around it's going to be quite a challenge the continuity of all of this <laughs> yes. you know so Ben has some very impactful um, material shots of the Saudi Hawks uh, crewing pre prepping the aircraft crewing in etc on Friday which if any of you were here uh, on Friday, you will know very well that it was not a pleasant weather day whatsoever. No. Driving rain, absolutely relentlessly for, yeah. for probably about eight hours. So it's very tempting to use that crewing room material, but then we'll probably make use of one of the rehearsal displays, which were shot in fairly sunny yeah. conditions. Yeah, or indeed yesterday, the Saudi Hawks uh, managed to get in a full show yesterday uh, with all of their vertical manoeuvres, bar one. Yeah, so I think the, I mean, Ben Donnell will... Uh, introduce this program and uh, provide his excellent narration throughout uh, uh, alongside his live commentary with Mark's commentary as well but I think an early line in that commentary script narration script will be this is made up of material shot on several days in several different weather conditions yeah and I think we just have to accept that it's going to look a bit different from day to day but as you mentioned at the start, we have seen most things at some point in, in great conditions. We've had some lovely skies at times on Saturday and Sunday, and indeed on Thursday. Uh, some lovely puffy white clouds and uh, quite dramatically being torn apart by the winds at high level. And I remember particularly the uh, likes of the Swedish SK-60 um, with its smoke pods under the wings. And that was standing out really nicely on Saturday in the wind. Just check who's live because we've got a gazelle arriving actually. Yes, yeah, speaking of um, arrivals and departures, um, I don't suppose you've seen a list of movements for today. Quickly check this phone. Let's have a go. No, nothing yet. 
<laughs> so we're Challenge. all in the dark, except well, all we know is that it's, uh, over the course of the next few hours, more than 200 aircraft from 30 nations are going to take off from here. And that includes a lot of very rare types, uh, rare not just in British skies, but rare in any skies. And I'm thinking of the likes of the SK-60, the ME-262, uh, wherever, you are, wherever you are in the world, these are not common sights. Indeed. I wonder if the... Yeah, I want to look at that list now and see if uh, the ME-260 is anywhere near the meteor. It would be nice to see those two in the same bit of tarmac in that sky. Yeah, I suppose the meteor with the Lancaster, I remember that was something I was particularly looking forward to, but we, we did yes. have lots of sky tanker themed bits and pieces throughout the show, just without that. Yeah, we did. We had some uh, uh, some fantastic sky tanker fly paths, and I think the standout, my two standouts in that theme, had to be the uh, the German A400M with the tornadoes, which performed some lovely, quite steep topside passes in formation, and then the French C135FR Strato tanker on uh, the Wednesday and uh, the Friday. The final pass in that display, coming down really low gear out, low overshoot, retracting that gear and then still at quite low level going into a fairly aggressive wing rock. Yes, yeah, some gorgeous material of that re recorded during the rehearsal and it's, you know, with the commentary from uh, Friday, I think that will make for a really nice piece in the edited programme. Very dramatic to see a large aircraft like that low down high angle of bank. Okay, be our first departure then, a pair of NH90s. And these will be the NH-90s from the German army on uh, only their second Riat appearance. We saw them here last year. Lovely to have them back. those aircraft taking part in a flying display over the last few days and giving a, a, a very polished impactful performance in a helicopter that you might not think looking at it is going to be outstandingly maneuverable but what caught my attention particularly was it's, it's very maneuverable in yaw and there's a maneuver where uh, the helicopter comes and hovers points straight at us and then very quickly yaws through 90 degrees to the left and then another 180 degrees to the left and, and those yaw starts and stops are very precise Got a Chinook entering the runway to our left. I wonder, is this going to be a Royal Air Force example or is it going to be the Dutch? That's the Dutch. Oh, a CH-47F model then, if it is one of the Dutch Chinooks. Dutch have contributed very strongly this year. Air Force sending not just a Chinook but also F-16, F-35 as well. We'll be seeing those depart later on. Could be the last time we see uh, a Dutch F-16 here so looking forward to that departure. Posing for photos down the end. Oh that's nice. And is he uh, joining up with another Chinook? There is another Chinook off to the right-hand okay, side. Yeah. Could it be another Dutch example? You can see, it. we're in full-blown knockdown mode. You can see the guys there uh, sorting out the fencing at the moment. It does make it for a bit of a noisy day. I mean, it's a noisy day all round with all the aircraft taking off, but you'll hear some clunks and bangs in the background as well.
Yeah, so uh, the Royal Netherlands Air Force acquired seven C-model Chinooks from Canada in 1993. They've been a Chinook operator ever since then. They then acquired six new CH-47Ds. They've been deployed worldwide in support of peacekeeping and combat operations. In 2012, they acquired six CH-47F Chinooks to supplement the fleet and then acquired a further 12 to replace the CH-47D in 2016. The D model has now been retired from Dutch service. Just look up from your notes for a moment, Adam, and enjoy this. Look, lovely departure. Oh, that's lovely. Well, that's how to do a departure from Riyadh in helicopters. And a long flight home if you're going to sit on the back of that ramp the whole way. Mind you, good views. Probably worth explaining for anyone not familiar with the site layout here and, and the reason for some of these uh, movements and, and little uh, departures uh, fly pass on departure. There's a little viewing area down at each end of the runway called Park and View. Uh, so some of these rotary departures will be asked to encompass both of those viewing areas as they leave us to make sure the photographers get some uh, good shots. There goes the Airbus H-175, one of the helicopter types competing to replace the Puma in Royal Air Force service. So that could very well be a helicopter that we see at Riyadh many more times in the future. And do I spy an Army Air Corps Gazelle entering the runway to our left? If that is what I can I see, know. then this will be it is. the last time we see one at Riyadh. Such a familiar sound. Yeah, the uh, gazelle being retired from Army Air Corps service in 2024, although luckily we've got a good number of them on the civil register and we've seen several civilian operated gazelles here over the last few days. a very busy period of rotary action because we've got another another helicopter of some kind on our left what could this be here another helicopter out to the west oh yes Let's Let's get a Merlin. camera on it ah a merlin hc4 See their busy sites with their runway cleaners, sweepers doing the important job of, sort of sterilizing all the taxiways and things which have been made use of by all of us in the public this weekend. And now it needed for what they're 
normal duty would be. Yeah, so making sure they're clear of any uh, debris. All, there. all sorts of things, you know, attending the show on this, this duty, you see all kinds of things that I would never have thought of. And driving in today, the fog check as, yeah, as we yeah. bring the vehicle on site, stopping, getting out, checking the underside, rolling forward a bit, checking again, would never have crossed my mind. So that's said, uh, yeah, we crossed the what what is today an active taxiway. Also the centre of that. So yeah, important to keep um, taxiways clear of debris, of course. It's interesting hearing it was an off-crowd wind, so wind coming off the airfield, off the crowd, and onto, uh, over to the runway. Pretty well all weekend crosswind for the displays, but it did mean that anything getting airborne from the public area would enter into the display area effectively mm. so lots of reminders about fog from the commentators so hold, hold on to your umbrellas and it was the kind of weekend where an umbrella could just go yeah astray. oh yeah i saw a few inside out umbrellas at one point um you know not flying across the airfield but just people holding on to them desperately trying to uh, to you know, keep a, a hold on those umbrellas fully inside out in those real gusts on saturday quite unpleasant at times So can you spy anything about to happen now? And Adam, you mentioned the photography opportunities, the enclosures at uh, either end of the airfield. We do, of course, have free at open today as well. You can see the guys, if you can see my view on camera one, the guys there. It's as full as it's been all weekend. You know, everyone here for the duration, this being one of the highlights of the show, really. Yeah. yeah that's quite a spectacle, seeing quite so many aircraft apart in quick succession. Uh, at times during the day, it feels almost like a stream departure. And a rare moment of calm, which is always a little bit... Okay, I can see a follow me down on the Western End taxiway. Oh, you can take me, Andrew. That car in the far distance there, I believe the follow me vehicle, so something might be following it out. It may just be repositioning. He has his, oh no, we've got the, is it the Manchester? No. Oh, I keep saying A109 in my head, but I dare say that's not, is it? I don't think we actually have any A109s no. at the show this year. Let's take a look at your screen. What have we got? Could it be one of the Italian helicopters, the HH1? It is, isn't it? It's our um, search and rescue demo uh, yeah. helicopter. Yeah, something we've been uh, seeing in the flying display and one moment from that that stands out, the penultimate pass with uh, an Italian flag suspended below the helicopter and uh, w one of the aircrew hanging from it. And if I'm not mistaken, the poor guy got drenched every day. Yes. Heavy downpour, you know, there can't be many worse places to be on the airfield at that point. No, than no. from the <laughs> helicopter, being pelted by uh, heavy rain. Yeah. Above and beyond the Call of Duty, that one, but uh, in the name of. Uh, no, I, I'm going to step on the side. It's not an Air Force. Is it an Air Force aircraft? Yes, no, yes, yes, it is. It's from 15 Stomo. So, um, w a worthwhile exercise in flying the flag in the 100th anniversary of uh, military flying in uh, Italy. Well, I think we've got an arrival, possibly for a run and break. We do get some arrivals uh, on departure day, which might sound counterintuitive, but uh, a lot of the aircraft here come with support aircraft.
worth having that, I think, so that Andrew, uh, Andy can yeah, okay. what's going on. I've got the chat um, uh, working on my phone now. I had to copy and paste the link into Google rather than just clicking it. arrived on site today it was uh lovely blue skies but it was raining yes from blue skies very peculiar it was odd just see and there's still a few little up. spots mm. yeah but at least there's some cloud around now which kind of explains it whereas before it was there was a little bit of high i suppose uh it wasn't really cirrus but alto stratus perhaps but not much of it and very high up Hard to believe that was the cause of our precipitation. Got a helicopter on the right hand end no airborne, of the runway. A helicopter on the left hand end of the runway as well. That's fair. So we'll go left, says Andrew. Not worth bringing the radio in, Andrew, so you can uh, hear what's going on. Try to. So, is he, is he going to get the flag out for a final flourish, do you think? Normal airfield departures, generally, are... entering on the right hand side of the runway there.
This could be the uh, Irish Air Corps EC-135. This is really giving our recognition skills a workout. Then, uh, second helicopter looks like it's entering the runway behind. On the right-hand end of the runway now, we have uh, Dutch NH-90, one of several Dutch contributions, as I've mentioned. The NH-90 being an aircraft that uh, we do see quite a lot at the Air Tattoo nowadays. Something you see very well from this angle is the cheat line down the side of the fuselage. You can see about a third of the way up, there's a sudden change in angle. And that is uh, to help reduce the aircraft's radar cross-section. I only mention it because... Um, we did get such a distinct view of it there in this particular light and from this particular angle. But it does help give this helicopter the lowest radar cross-section in its class. Also, when looking at the helicopter from below, uh, it has a diamond-shaped hull for much the same reason, fully made of composite material. All in aid of improving survivability. It is often the way on react departure days that we get uh, some of these slower rotary assets out first. Partly because they're easier to extract from the static display and partly because simply due to their lower airspeed a lot of them have a relatively long journey to get back home. But the, uh, the faster noisier assets are still coming up, we've got a lot of them here. And, uh, I think we can all uh, be looking forward particularly to some of those static display aircraft that we see very rarely at the Air Tattoo. Uh, Greek F4, Polish Su-22, for example. Can't give you a specific time for them, unfortunately, because we haven't been given a list of movements. But they are coming up today. Almost every aircraft here for the show will depart. Well, probably by about one o'clock. Sometimes there's a few stragglers but the bulk of the activity is before lunchtime.
Well, just peeking into view behind the Friat enclosure, we have a pair of aircraft from the Italian Air Force, albeit we can only see one at the moment. And these are U-208s. The second example, we should see very shortly, wearing a commemorative colour scheme marking 100 years of the Aeronautica Militare, the Italian Air Force. And they have been very big contributors to the show this year. In fact, that anniversary has been one of the two main themes of the Air Tattoo 2023. I'm going to pull a little bit wider just uh, to let that second aircraft come into view and you'll be able to appreciate the gorgeous paint scheme that it's wearing. Oh, I've lost it. It's already on the runway. <laughs> Sorry about that. A lot of contributions from the modern day Italian Air Force. We've had uh, three of their aircraft in the flying display, including two of their very highly acclaimed solo displays from the Italian Air Force Repatto Sperimentale Volo, their flight test center, the F-2000A Typhoon and the T-346A Master, but an even more impressive variety in the static display, including several React debutants, the P-72, maritime patrol aircraft and the G550 conformal airborne early warning aircraft or rather the E550 as it's known in Italian service reflecting its role and also we hope to see later today a very brightly painted AMX A11 Ghibli that an Italian type making its last appearance at the Air Tattoo because it is due to retire in 2024. the CH-53 out to our right-hand side, just lifting off the runway. This one coming from the German Air Force, which is the only operator of the CH-53 in Europe, and in fact, one of only five export customers generally. Absolute beast of a helicopter, three tons of payload can be carried internally, three and a half tons, and roughly double that can be carried externally.
just about make out, uh, if we come to camera one, the park and view enclosures that I was mentioning. One of these at each end of the runway. And if you don't have a free app ticket, then this is, well, this particular one, Park and View East, is the most desirable place to watch the departures. You get a lot of aircraft taxiing very close to you. And those coming from the uh, hot ramp, the north east loop, where a lot of the flying display assets are parked, well, they will taxi pretty much head on to these guys as they enter the runway. It's uh, quite a dramatic place to be. But here at Show Center, I would say the prime spot quite close to where a lot of the aircraft, especially the heavier aircraft, will be lifting off. Well, uh, entering the runway to our left-hand side and backtracking, we have a whole fleet of Italian, or rather ex-Italian Air Force types. All here to mark the anniversary and all of them departing together because they have come all the way from Italy to join us here at the Air Tattoo in the static display. Lovely to see such a wide variety of former Italian Air Force types joining us at the show. A great effort going to attract these aircraft from Italy itself, the likes of the T6 for example. It would be so easy to get a, a T6 from here in Britain, but no, we do have an aircraft from Italy in Italian markings. And in fact, that T6 just about to enter my shot. I shall pick him up any second. We also have, uh, I'm spotting a Sci-I Marchetti SF260 bright orange. Still very much in use with the Italian Air Force, albeit in modernised form. A modernised form that makes it harder to fly. It was decided that the original SF260 was actually too gentle uh, in stalls. You could stall the aircraft and not notice, so they put a more aggressive wing on it and the uh, SF260s in modern day service present a little bit more of a challenge. I mentioned the anniversary of the Italian Air Force being one of the main themes of the show this year. It's uh, uh, an Air Force that has a very long history, actually Italian military aviation dating all the way back to 1884, lighter than air aviation at that point and part of the Italian Army rather than uh, an independent Air Force. The first independent Air Force was established on the 28th of March 1923. It hasn't been in continuous operation though because the turmoil of the Second World War saw it divided into two separate entities and the modern Aeronautica Militare as we know it today was founded when Italy became a republic in 1946 but it has been in continuous operation ever since then. Well, we have uh, the first of our fast jets now uh, lining up to our right hand side, holding short of the runway. I did spot some more helicopters out to our left, so I'm not uh, totally sure which we're going to see departing first. They 
Yes, we do see one of several Royal Air Force Typhoon FGR-4s. I think I'm right in saying we've got three RAF uh, Typhoon FGR-4s here and one Typhoon T3, which is uh, distinctive by dint of being a twin-seater. However, it looks like it's the uh, helicopter on our left-hand side that's going to go first. If we can get a camera onto that. If you have just joined us in the last half hour or so and you're uh, wondering what it is that you've tuned into, welcome to Departures Day from the Royal International Air Tattoo, the world's largest military air show. The air show ended formally yesterday. However, we have in excess of 200 aircraft here from 30 nations, all of which need to be dispersed back to their home base. And the majority of those departures will occur over the next three hours or so. so very dramatic morning here. We're only just getting into it with some uh, rotary and historic aircraft departing so far, but the first of our fast jets, as I just mentioned, is preparing to take off from our right. If you missed our coverage from the air show itself, then uh, we at Planes TV have an aviation centric streaming service watch.planestv.com you can sign up there today and re-watch all of our live broadcasts from friday saturday and sunday If you stick around for a little while, three months or so perhaps, then we'll also be producing a roughly two-hour edited highlights program complete with cockpit footage and other material shot around the showground of both the flying and static display assets that we've enjoyed over the past few days and some filming from the uh, arrivals and rehearsals as well. That hopefully coming to watch.planestv.com in uh, sometime this autumn, I should think. So we've got two Typhoons on our right-hand side, one of them being the aircraft we've been seeing in the flying display over the last few days, Blackjack, which is just about to enter my frame. Special scheme aircraft from 29 Squadron, formerly 29 Reserve Squadron, RAF Coningsby. Flown very competently indeed by Flight Lieutenant Matt Brighty, who has been putting on some performances in appalling weather conditions on Friday especially. The rain really coming down at that point. And the afterburner standing out well against some very dark skies.
So as they disappear into cloud on their way back into Coningsby, we see uh, Dornier 228 enter the runway, and I expect this will be an Italian Air Force, uh, Italian Army, sorry, aircraft, which has been participating in the static display. also see preparing to take to the runway we have the first of our big aerobatic teams of the day the Saudi Hawks who have been in uh, the UK for a little over a week now initially basing from Waddington and then joining us here at the Royal International Air Tattoo their first display at a British air show for something like 11 years so we will be seeing them very shortly after the departure of the 228 and they have been uh, performing some very enjoyable displays over the last couple of days, especially yesterday when they just about managed to get in their full display bar one manoeuvre, uh, one of their, uh, <laughs> well it's a piece of sky art and uh, they draw the Italian national symbol of, it's the Saudi national symbol of uh, the palm tree crossed by two swords. Couldn't quite get the full version of that in, we got a rolling version, same thing but a little flatter. But other than that, their full show, vertical break, bomb burst, loops, it's the only time that we've seen the complete full performance uh, with the rather variable weather that we've uh, been faced with over the past few days. Apologies about some of the wobbles over the last minute or so. It's just started raining here, which uh, the forecast had not uh, warned us to expect today. So 
It's been a little bit of a faff while we try and get some rain covers onto uh, the cameras. But what we're watching now is an aircraft being returned to the active side of the airfield from the static display. So you too, Dragon Lady. Part of a very strong US Air Force contribution to the static this year. And Fairford being a U-2 operational base, there is no need for it to depart as such. Rather, it can merely be towed over to the hangars on the far side of the airfield. Andrew, I've climbed up. Andrew. This is my brother, Andrew, Adam, Adrian. And Adam, Andy. And Andy. Yeah. It's virtually impossible to uh, find the right one when you need to. It popped up on the roof with your waterproof. Adam, it's down here. It's Thank Andrew. you. Yeah. I noticed it stopped raining though. Yeah, it has right? stopped raining. Well, it's that's what happens when you bring a waterproof up here. Yeah, well, and I am to blame for all of the weather, of course, because I bought two bottles of Factor 50 sun cream two weeks ago thereby condemning us to a weekend of <laughs> wind and rain. It's a nice, nice day though, you know, patches of sunshine and that contrast to sky we go on about. And a wonderful sight of the Saudis heading home. Home? Well, I don't know. I, they might be going back to Waddington. I can see the Red Arrows behind them, so uh, I know they've been hosting them up there at the Red Arrows home base. And that still takes some getting used to, saying Waddington is the Red Arrows Indeed. home base, as opposed to Scampton. We had some lovely form joint formation flights over my home city, Lincoln, over the cathedral. Some lovely photos appearing on social media of uh, those two teams over the finest city in the land.
So the Red Arrow is also taking to the runway and can't help but wonder if this is going to be a formation transit back to Waddington. Both aircraft, uh, both, both teams rather, have uh, very strong links between them. The Saudi Hawks haven't been formed back in 1999 and have been trained by former members of the Red Arrows and now supervised by former members of the Red Arrows. And indeed we heard uh, Mike Ling, a very familiar voice, providing commentary for the Saudi Hawks during their display on Sunday. Uh, 10 red arrows here this week the eight that they use in their display plus two spares flown by red 10 and red 11 respectively Both teams flying a very similar aircraft indeed. The Hawk Mark 65 for the Saudi Hawks, which is the export version of the Hawk T1, as flown by the Red Arrows. Same smoke system for both teams as well. two of our four big jet aerobatic teams now having departed Fairford. We've enjoyed, in addition to these two, Patria Aguila from Spain. They just about managed to squeeze in a full display yesterday after being limited to their uh, flat show up until that point. Full show, uh, very enjoyable. And then we had a very welcome participant indeed in the form of Al Vazan from the United Arab Emirates, uh, who were performing at Riyadh and indeed performing in the UK for the first time since 2012. We'll be seeing them later in their very attractively painted MB339 NATs. And Alpha Sands display yesterday was certainly the uh, standout their contribution. They were also limited to their flat show on Saturday, but on Sunday it was the full show with the looping manoeuvres, the bomb bursts, uh, all of the opposition stuff and some very impressive solo flying as well, including synchronised Lomshevaks by the synchro pair and also a tail slide from one of them as well. Uh, the only aerobatic team in the world to perform synchronised launch of axle, the only jet aerobatic team in the world to do so, I should say. So that was a mightily impressive sight, and we look forward to seeing one last glimpse of them as they depart very shortly. Well, now we have uh, 
an aircraft from historic helicopters based down at Shard in Somerset. This being a Sea King in the colours of the Belgian Air Force. Belgium retired the Sea King a few years ago. It made its last re-at appearance in the flying display here in 2016. And uh, if you want to see that, then of course the Riat 2016 programme is all available on watch.planestv.com along with souvenir programmes for every edition of Riat from 2015 onwards. doubting myself now was it was it 2016 or 2017 for the Belgian Sea King it was one of those two years someone pop the answer in the chat so lined up on the runway now to our left we have a CV-22B Osprey from the United States Air Force 7th Special Operations Squadron at RAF Mildenhall, an aircraft we saw in the flying display. This is not the very same aircraft we saw in the flying display because the uh, flying display asset made an air start arriving on slot from Mil Mildenhall and then departing off slot also. And it flew in formation with an MC-130J Commando 2 as well as performing a solo demonstration. We'll be seeing a departing MC-130 from Mildenhall later today also, as there was an example of both types in the static display. But here goes the Osprey. So departing initially with the rotors on the 45 degree axis, a mix of rotor-borne and wing-borne flight, and then transitioning into airplane mode with the uh, rotor, with the rotors both facing directly forwards, fully wing-borne flight, wings generating all of the lift. Additionally, in the flying display, we also saw fully rotor-borne flight uh, with some uh, hovering and... Did we see a vertical takeoff and landing this year? I wasn't actually filming uh, the CV-22 on either day. That was Ian who uh, was doing a stint on camera at that point, so I didn't get to watch it too closely. It's always one I've enjoyed in the past. Well, here we have Cranfield Aerospace Solutions hydrogen-powered Britain Norman Islander. only backtracking some of the runway because, of course, this is a short takeoff and landing aircraft. It does not need to go full length, so for the sake of expediency, rather than backtracking all the way to the end of runway 27, just going to the midpoint in front of the free out enclosure and looks like it will be departing out to our left from there.
by entering the runway just below the island there, a trio of Italian warbirds, three G46s. They were also here on static display as part of the Italian Air Force centenary theme. This uh, a training aircraft developed in the early 1950s, roughly analogous to our own chipmunk. These are all twin-seaters, but it was also produced in single-seat form. That was the C model. These are all B models. So, lined up to our right, an uh, aircraft, one of our static contributions from the Czech Air Force, a Mil My 171SH. This could very well be its last Riat appearance because the Czech Air Force has selected the UH-1Y Venom to replace it. Parting off to our left, we have what I'm told in my ear is a lynx. Let's get a close look at that. Uh, that is not a lynx. That is a uh, wildcat of the uh, Royal Navy. Back to the Li-171, which has just lifted to our right. An aircraft we saw here in the flying display last year, performing a combat search and rescue demonstration. Combat search and rescue is one of this aircraft's primary duties. It often conducts those missions in concert with a Mi-24, the Mi-24 providing 
top cover and close air support while the 171 performs the extraction. We saw that demonstrated in the flying display last year with both helicopters performing a two-ship demonstration. And of course, that's available to watch at watch.planestv.com. Bristow Helicopters S92 now lining up to depart from our right. Come up to the roof bearing gifts, Adam. Ah! A list, a movement sheet. That is indeed an excellent gift. Well. I saw a few questions about um, various aircraft. Uh, Su 22s are due to depart in about 26 minutes. Okay. Which will be a noisy extravaganza. Yes. Oh, I said, uh, did I say plural though? It's just one aircraft, isn't it? Just one. Someone just was one. asking about um, 262 as well. I'll just have a look at that. And while you're looking for that, I'll just point out a couple of things I've spotted. We've got one of our Italian F2008 Typhoons, the one from the static display taxiing onto the runway. Uh, but in addition to that, in the far distance, I caught a glimpse of a Harrier. So uh, potentially going to get the first of our four uh, departing Harriers very shortly, or probably two of the four departing Harriers. Let's see at the. I'm going to have a look at the list. See if we've got the Spanish and the Italians anywhere near each other. Looks like the Spanish going first. Correction. Spanish going at midday. The uh, typhoon. An aircraft we saw in the flying display from 311 Gruppo, the Italian Air Force Flight Test Centre. This, a static example from the same air arm. The flying display aircraft wore a special tail scheme as well, again marking 100 years of the Italian Air Force. as did the static C-27 and the flying T-346A Master, all wearing the same tail design. It's been applied to the uh, three aircraft that have been selected as the primary Rapato Sperimentale Volo solo display aeroplanes for the 2023 season. 
In the background, I did see taxiing out there for Zan Al Emirat, the National Aerobatic Team of the UAE, so those aircraft also shortly to depart. And if you swing round, Adam, there's a couple of uh, light aircraft, the Broussard, and hmm, looks like a van, something like this, Bulldog potentially, already airborne. Yeah. Yeah, it's an RV-12. And the Broussard about to follow it. So the van's aircraft from Southampton University Aviation Society. Not a bad aviation society if you've got your own RV-12 to go on your No. Own. It was me joining the ski club. <laughs> oh, I was on a satellite campus. We didn't really have any societies. That doesn't surprise me. <laughs> And it is the Italians down there, the Harriers you spotted earlier. Due to depart shortly. The two typhoons on the two seventh threshold, that must be. Who's that? Is that this RAF aircraft? Uh, no, I think this is two of uh, the Italian examples. Ah, still Italians. One with that special tail. You not were yet, watching. not yet. I'm going to guess this is static and spare, which both come from standard operational squadrons within the Italian Air Force, whereas the special tail example comes from a 311 Gruppo. see listed very shortly the Lockheed U2 it's actually listed as a VAL which I read as validation yes but, uh, we're not going to get <laughs> a U2 display validation fortunately just uh, the static aircraft being moved from south to north yeah, side that's, that has already happened oh I'm miles away someone woke up earlier than I did First of the typhoons rolling. Here we have our two Italian Harriers. The one at the front, a standard single-seater, but the one at the rear is perhaps more interesting, at least on grounds of rarity, because it's a TAV-8 Harrier, a training variant with two seats, and the Italian Navy operates just three of them. The first time in over a decade that Harriers from two different air arms have both been present 
at the air tattoo because of course we had the Spanish EAV-8B Matador 2s uh, taking part in the flying display. But uh, out to our right, we have Alpasan taking to the runway. So if I just spin the camera around, we'll see some very attractively painted uh, MB339s. And I'll just describe a little bit of the symbolism about these teams, uh, about this team. Uh, so you'll see they're painted black and gold, black for oil, gold for the desert sand. There are seven of them representing the seven emirates that make up the UAE and their display is equally as filled with symbolism as the concept of the team itself. We see created in the sky during their show some of the landmarks of the United Arab Emirates, including the Palm in Dubai, very close to where this team is based at Al Minad Air Base. We also see a recreation of the Emirati national flag during the flag cross and a maneuver called the UAE DNA, which ends their show. It was one of the outstanding moments of the air tattoo this year, enhanced by this team's incredible smoke system. They produce smoke in red, green, white, and black. One of the few teams to produce smoke in four different colors, and the only jet aerobatic team in the world to produce black smoke. It made for quite an astonishing sight, and anyone who was watching our coverage yesterday have seen during that UAE DNA manoeuvre the smoke from it hanging in the sky for some minutes afterwards. Quite a surreal spectacle. Just the departure today and the engines are spooling up, the lights are on, they've got their tip tanks and underwing tanks for additional range which I think looks rather attractive on the MB339. An aircraft we're quite possibly seeing for the last time here in Emirati service because Alpha Sands jets are soon to be replaced in the mid 2020s, possibly with Hongdu L15 Falcon from China, twin engine after burning, lead in fighter trainer. mentioned they had seven aircraft. You will see on the screen now they have eight at the moment. That is because they have a spare jet with them, seven being utilised in the display itself. And what a great privilege it was to see them here. The Gulf nations becoming increasingly important at the Air Tattoo. We enjoyed three national aerobatic teams from that region at the show this year. Alvasan, the Saudi Hawks, and also the Royal Jordanian Falcons, plus a number of their aircraft on static display, including a, a Saudi A330 multi-role tanker transport and a Jordanian C-130H Hercules. In my notes, I see uh, that uh, twin seat Harrier is even rarer than I thought because the Italian Navy has not three but two of them. 
The last time an Italian Harrier appeared at the Air Tattoo was in 2005. And we see some nice symmetry here because their replacement is the F-35B Lightning. And taking to the runway behind the Harriers, we have a pair of F-35s. Not B models, but A models nonetheless. A very uh, appropriate uh, demonstration of old and new. So the F-35's vacating the runway and taking the taxiway on the north side. And uh, can't quite make out that roundel. It looks to me like the Dutch roundel. We do have two Dutch F-35As on static and uh, that in itself is quite a significant moment because it is the first time that a mainland European air arm has sent an F-35 to Riyadh. lovely wing rock for the benefit of the spectators at the park and view enclosure and taxiing out in front of us another aircraft of the Royal Netherlands Air Force participating in Riyadh perhaps for the last time we have uh, a pair of F-16 AM Fighting Falcons following out the F-35s the F-16 being on the brink of retirement from Dutch service, the F-35 replacing it. an aircraft on approach now from our right. I did start to explain earlier that uh, we do have aircraft landing here uh, at RAF Fairford even though this is departures day and uh, that can be for a number of reasons but primarily it's because some of the uh, aircraft that deploy here do need support for uh, either the transfer of personnel or the transfer of equipment. Those support aircraft aren't always able to stay with us for the entire air show weekend. So they might drop in on arrival days, drop off whatever they need to drop off, 
uh, and then return on departures day to uh, recover those equipment or personnel. This particular aircraft, a citation of the Spanish Navy, here to support the participation of their Harrier Matador 2 Plus aircraft, one in the flying display, one in the static display. And here we have 2XL Aviation's Diamond DA-62 Twin Star, utilised by the Coast Guard and accompanied, just creeping into shot there, by another 2XL asset, the King Air B-200. And uh, quite a queue of aircraft waiting to depart now because we have the Dutch F-35s and F-16s. We've got a third F-16 which I wasn't able to identify and we have uh, additionally the special tail Repato Sperimentale Volo Italian Flight Test Centre F-2000 Typhoon waiting to enter the runway as well. Those aircraft holding short at the moment because the citation we saw landing a moment ago is backtracking. It will now turn off the runway uh, to go and uh, we park alongside those Harriers which are down at the left hand end of the airfield. This is very much the nature of departure days here at the Air Tattoo. It does ebb and flow a bit. It's not uh, intended primarily to be uh, a public facing spectacle. This is very much an operational procedure. I'm just trying to get all of these aircraft off site in the most efficient way possible. There are, as I've mentioned, in excess of 200 of them due to depart from 30 nations this year. XL Aviation are always fantastic supporters of the air tattoo and I remember last year the fly pass they provided on the Friday with their Boeing 727 SF2R oil spill response aircraft flying with two extra 300Ls from the blades that then participated in the static display on the Saturday and Sunday 
it's nice to see the Friday show here at Riyadh developing into uh, its own entity in a way. We do see some Friday-only acts, an increasing number of arrivals taking place on the Friday, in addition to the roughly four-hour flying display. But uh, nice to have it uh, differentiated slightly from the main show on the weekends. It's not just weekend light. It very much has uh, some of its own displays, some of its own unique attractions. on the order of proceedings now. Uh, we do have an Army Air Corps Apache AH-2 just poking its nose out. The first time a Mark II Apache has appeared at the Air Tattoo, but it looks like the jets are going first. One of the F-35s has lined up on the runway. a little bit breezy today here at Fairford, not to nearly the same extent as on Saturday, but up here on the trailer roof you'll see a little bit of bouncing around. Are catching the wind a little bit at times. But I can't really complain after the weather we've had over the last few days with some of that torrential rain, especially on the Friday. I would take a sunny day with a little bit of wind. And it's one of the great advantages of being here for the entire duration of the show. We do get to uh, see that mix of weather conditions and some things do look great in those gloomier skies. Yesterday, some of the fast jets that flew after the rain were producing copious amounts of vapour and uh, great to have the pick, of, uh, the pick of all of that footage when it comes to editing our programme. departure from those four Dutch fast jets from the static display. Very much enjoyed that, but it looks like our next departure is going to be the uh, special tail Italian Typhoon, an aircraft we've seen in the flying display, uh, and particularly yesterday, uh, enjoyable in some very contrasty skies, quite a lot of vapour at times, 
and all enhanced by the smoke winders that it carries on the wingtips. It's going to be some lovely... I can't wait to see the slow motion footage because uh, in addition to uh, outputting the live stream we were recording that in a uh, very high frame rate, 100 frames per second and uh, I just think that's going to look fantastic when I do get a chance to look back on it. It was one of the uh, displays that uh, I uh, filmed myself on the telephoto camera and uh, yeah, it felt at the time like there could be some pretty special material coming from that. The Finnish Hornet was another flew immediately before the Italian Typhoon, if I remember correctly, and both of them flying in uh, lovely conditions just after a rain shower cleared through. Two Italian Typhoons now on the roll, the Special Scheme display jet and its spare. Well, I must apologise because I just saw two landing lights through my viewfinder and we're a bit busy doing multiple jobs here. Uh, I don't have a spotter up here to assist me. Uh, my primary job is filming everything. I just assumed two landing lights equaled two typhoons. Uh, but uh, the other one was, in fact, the Italian master, also from 311 Gruppa. Well, there goes the Apache. It is what would be known in America as an AH-64E Apache. We call it the Apache AH-2 because it's the second mark of Apache attack helicopter that has been operated by the Army Air Corps. And like I mentioned earlier, the first time that it has appeared at the Air Tattoo. Belgian F-16 now lining up on the runway. They provided an example in the static display, plus a flying display aircraft, plus a spare. This is the static display example. All three aircraft coming from different squadrons, by the way, which is always a nice touch. Uh, Belgian F-16 solo display was a real highlight of the flying program. Looking forward to seeing that aircraft apart. It wears the Dream Viper special scheme. Runway next, we have the Spanish national aerobatic team Patria Aguila, who are performing at Riyadh for the first time since 2018. And indeed, this was their first full display season flying aerobatic displays since 2019. So, quite a rare air show participant. They're flying as just a six ship this year, although we will see them depart with at least one spare. They didn't have the best of luck with weather and flew uh, a, a flat show on practice day but also on the Saturday. Yesterday however we got their full performance which includes some lovely vertical maneuvers. The 
a soloist did a lovely tail slide. That closed yesterday's show and uh, they flew in some really rather lovely light. They fly the C101EB Aviojet, which has been largely retired from Spanish Air Force service. No longer used in the training role, having been replaced by the Pilatus PC-21, but still utilised by Patria Aguila. This is a part-time aerobatic team formed of full-time flight instructors from the Spanish Air Academy. And it feels like I've been saying this a lot today, but who knows if we will see Patria Aguila or the Aviojet at Riyadh ever again, because these aircraft will reach the end of their useful lives in the mid-2020s. Who knows if Patria Aguila will continue beyond that point. The PC-21 is not currently operated in sufficient numbers and indeed Spanish Air Force High Command has said on occasion that they have uh, no particular interest in maintaining the team uh, on a foreign-built aircraft type. And uh, there's no obvious candidate to replace them. Airbus is developing a jet trainer for Spanish use. It will replace the Aviojet in some roles, but also the F-5 as a lead-in fighter trainer. Will it be ready uh, and produced in sufficient numbers to replace the Aviojet and see Patria Aguila maintain con continuous active service? Well, that... Uh, it's far from certain, so it could be that when the Aviojet is retired, that is the end of Patria Aguila. Individual stream departure, but relatively close stream. That perhaps determined by the wind conditions. We did see it quite a bit over the course of the last few days, rather than a formation takeoff. if I mentioned Patria Aguila then probably also got to give mention to one of the highlights for me of the entire flying display yesterday um, which was their six ship formation landing in very tricky wind conditions as well well I see the finest aircraft of the entire air show lineup here of the French Air and Space Force, I can hear laughter down in the, the trailer on my talkback unit because, uh, well, they all know that I have a bit of, a, bit of a soft spot for the uh, Dyer TBM. This is a TBM 700. It appeared on the static display, in the static display, I should say. And this aircraft, well, the reason I like it it's the fastest of the, uh, they're known as very fast turboprops, these single-engined uh, turboprops. Cruise speed of 330 knots, cruising altitude of flight level 310. It's got uh, a nearly 2,000 nautical mile range. So you can fly it almost as far and almost as fast as a business jet. But you can also land it 
on 300 metres of gravel. And you can't do that in a Cessna Citation. I did get to fly in one once and it was one of the best days of my life. The laughter continues down below. Well, seeing as we have uh, what appears to be a quieter lull in proceedings here, uh, it's a good opportunity to say hello if you have recently joined us. Welcome to Plains TV and our coverage of departures here at the Royal International Air Tattoo. We've been here all week providing the uh, official video coverage of the show, broadcasting live. Much of that uh, live broadcasting going out on our streaming service, watch.planestv.com. If you want to watch the weekend's performances, then you can sign up there. It's £10 a month. That will get you access to our entire back catalogue. Well, no, that's not entirely true. It's not our entire back catalogue. We're still in the process of, of adding some of that uh, older material. But certainly everything from the last 15 years, all of our uh, live broadcasts and DVDs are all available there. And much of our archive content dating all the way back to 1989, also covering air shows across the UK and occasionally further afield. If you, if you stick with us on watch.planestv.com, you will be able to enjoy live coverage of the Duxford Battle of Britain Air Show in September. And shortly after that, we also intend to publish a souvenir programme from Riyadh 2023, which will include our best footage as well as cockpit material and uh, other material from around the showground. a runtime somewhere in the region of two hours. We're expecting that to be available this autumn. Very recently we also released our souvenir programme from Riyadh 2022. Two and a half hour video which you can watch right now if you sign up to watch.planestv.com but pray silence for the mighty TBM 700. We have now a C295M taxiing around at the right hand end of the runway. And uh, if I can make out the roundel correctly, which is a little bit tricky from this distance, I would guess uh, that this is a Spanish Air Force example. They, they call it the TP21 in Spanish service. There was one due to be here supporting Patria Aguilar's participation in the show getting a little bit of rain coming down so actually I'm going to ask the uh, team down below to mute my microphone for a moment and I am going to uh, do a bit of camera maintenance and get a rain cover on.
Well, here we have an aircraft that we were very relieved to see arriving here at the Air Tattoo on, was it the Thursday evening? I've got a feeling it was. The Hellenic Air Force F4E Phantom. There was a little, little bit of jeopardy as to whether or not it would make it. It did roll in about six hours late in the end. The Greek Phantom Fleet was originally ordered in 1971, was further supplemented with ex US and German F4s in the early 1990s. During 1997, 39 of them were upgraded to what they call Peace Icarus 2000 standard, with new avionics, cockpit systems, and weapons. And in particular, that gave them the ability to integrate with AIM 120 Beyond Visual Range air to air missiles. They intend to operate their fleet of upgraded F4s up until 2027 and they are the final European operator of the type, or rather I should say the final uh, operator of the type in the European Union. So as we watch the uh, Hellenic Phantom backtracking for departure on runway 27 here at Fairford, the uh, Spanish TP-21 that I noted earlier has disappeared and uh, I would imagine what's happened there is it has headed off to the area where Patria Aguila was parked and will now pick up personnel and equipment and depart later on today. So not a departure just yet, rather just uh, repositioning on the airfield. Be pleased to know as well the rain was just the tiniest of showers it has now stopped the forecast today is pretty good and uh, what you're looking at now is t uh, the first of two uh, german air force eurofighter ef 2000s one of them in a special paint scheme, as you can see. They also soon to depart. Part of a, a strong German Air Force contribution this year. We 
I uh, saw the CH-53 departing earlier from the static display and of course we had uh, the flying display contribution, uh, part of the Sky Tanker theme, an Airbus A400M-180 flying with a Tornado ECR and Tornado ICS and uh, on the uh, Saturday in particular they performed a lovely display with uh, a very dramatic three ship topside pass with hose and drogues extended. Just waiting for them to clear away and then the landing lights will go on on the F4. There it is. We, we await the F4 departure. A GA departure by the looks of things, which is just about to pop into my shot. Let's see. Looks like a Reams 152 or 172 rocket. My GA recognition is not very good, I'm afraid. We do always get a fair few of these GA types in the static display and they very much have their place here because of course one of the purposes of the air tattoo is to inspire the next generation. Yes, it's all very well looking at an F-16, but you can't go and fly one of those tomorrow, whereas a Cessna 172, you can just go to your local aero club and book yourself a trial lesson.
So I thought what I'd do now is just break out the schedule and see what we have coming up uh, over the next little while. And uh, the first thing that's become immediately obvious is that we are not running according to that schedule particularly uh, at the moment. But uh, I do see listed actually is uh, already having been due to depart the uh, Polish Air Force Sukhoi Su-22M fitter which is uh, one of the great highlights of the static park here this weekend so hopefully we'll be, we will be seeing that very shortly us rather by surprise, Alpha San performing a run and break. Obviously, just a party on a local sortie. That would explain the uh, lengthy pause as we uh, waited for Fazan Al Emirat to run in. Perhaps off on a, a, a local photo flight. Alva Sands, a team that's uh, really been getting around on the airshow circuit of late, although this is their first time in Britain in 11 years, as I've previously mentioned. They were formed back in 2010 with the assistance of the Freccio Tricolori using these MB339s that were purchased especially for the team. The aircraft type has no other role within the Emirati Air Force. That in itself is a relatively unique position to be in. Uh, the training assistance was provided by the Freccio Tricolori initially, but more recently by members of the Patrouille de France. They made their airshow debut in 2011 in Dubai, and their international debut followed a year later here at the Royal International Air Tattoo. But they have now flown around the world, across Africa, Asia, and Europe, Just off the top of my head, some of the countries they have displayed in include Slovakia, Morocco, Russia, China, Malaysia earlier this year. Uh, due to fly in Greece later this season and possibly one other major show in Europe as well. Alvazan clear the runway for German Eurofighters line up.
I see out to our left hand side uh, another F-16 entering the runway, also entering the runway a little further afield we have the Cranfield University Saab 340 I don't know if uh, Ian's microphone is up, but that's an aircraft you know rather a lot about. Well, I, <laughs> that's a very uh, generous way of describing what I know about that aeroplane. What I learnt about that aeroplane, I learnt when um, oh, Joe uh, took me for a flight in it, and we did a little trial, or well, a little um, practice flight basically for what they do with in the day-to-day -day role of that aircraft as a university aircraft so teaching students about uh, recording flight dynamics the way the aircraft not a dutch roll and uh aggressive quite aggressive negative g um was it zero g uh with the aircraft and each student has a screen in front of them that's recording all of the instruments a uh, pilot can see and a few a few more bits and pieces besides it's quite a fascinating thing, so I sat there with my clipboard and camera recording that and it's a program I didn't manage, a little YouTube video I'll be getting to at some point. So do make sure you're subscribed for a bit more detail on the, what the Saab 340 gets used for at Cranfield University. Yeah, and a relatively new addition in their fleet because I remember their Jetstream, which was their flying laboratory for many years, making its final air show appearance in 2021. When exactly did the uh, Saab 340 join the uh, Cranfield University fleet? Got a feeling it was around 2020. We've seen one other Cranfield aircraft, haven't we, which has already departed the Trinata? The hydrogen. Um, yes, the Britain Norman uh, Islander. Highlander, uh, of course, it is. Collaboration with Britain Norman, of course. And an aircraft. I've heard rumours of um, the Cranfield guys wanting to get that out on the airshow circuit, and I think I'd welcome that so, as a technology demonstrator and yes. uh, just a reminder that there's a, a place for hydrogen within aviation. A sustainable fuel source. Yeah, if Joe does ever invite you in onto the 340 for a flight and they tell you to put your seatbelt on, having just made a visit to the cockpit, I recommend putting that seatbelt on. That's all I'll say about that. There's a reason they put you down the very back of the aircraft for some of those maneuvers. also had another uh, Dutch F-16 taxiing out uh, in the last few minutes as well, just ahead of the Cranfield Saab 340. It's a slight shame that the best of the weather is saved for arrivals and departures, but I really shouldn't complain about any spells of clearer drier condition should I? It's all a gift. One of the repeat questions in the chats has been uh, when's the ME262 going and it is scheduled to leave us at about 2pm this afternoon. One other question which lodged in my brain only because it's a it's well, it's good patter to be honest to fill these gaps. But Angus Cooper asked very early on what, what, what our highlights were. So your and my sort of mm. pick of the weekend's flying. Um, Adam, what uh, highlights? What was the highlight for you of Royal International Air 2023? Don't ooh. say TBM 700 no, taking well, off. Well, uh, very nearly that that came in as, as maybe number three or four. But I can think of uh, several standout displays certainly the one that surprised me the most and it is absolutely right at the top of my list of highlights Swedish SK60 wasn't that absolutely captivating I'm just it was indeed just checking the chat as well for other yeah seeing a, a, a quarter rolling circle from a jet I've never seen it any 
form of rolling circle from a jet before. That was extraordinary. And, and the slow roll as well. That was the slowest slow roll I've ever seen. And I haven't seen um, any uh, sort of official confirmation from Air Tattoo about the award winners. Ah, I did well, see I've someone just received in the chat. that. There we go. That would be nice to have a look at. Yes. Because I believe um, the SK60 did win, win an award. I, I would very much hope so. Um, unfortunately, I've been sent it as a screenshot uh, <laughs> and I can't open the photo because the connection here isn't good enough. Um, so I've asked for a plain text version. Are you not hopped on the, um, the Wi-Fi, the Starlink? I, I haven't. I should do that, shouldn't I? should do that. Yeah. yeah it would be interesting to know those award winners. Those awards are awarded on the Sunday evening after the flying display. I believe I've seen some nice pictures of the Rafale team celebrating, so I believe they were recipients. And I saw yes, and deservedly so. And mm. I mentioned, uh, I was chatting with someone in the chat over the live broadcast at the weekend, saying that the Rafale was the standout for them. And for me, the telltale signs are, of, it, the telltale signs of a very good flying display are for a fast jet like that or if it's been a challenge to record hmm. you know, if it's catchy guessing quick rolls high G's but equally I don't know how you found it Adam but the SK60 was a real joy to film a it very was. flowing display it reminded me of some glider displays I've seen and actually I don't find the Rafale all that difficult I find the Gripen um, to be by far the and the Czech one especially to yes. be by far the hardest uh, uh, display to film uh, the, the Master is also a tricky one yeah, the master in that. Uh, the hawk, I always used to say, was a bit of a challenge as well. And the master is like a hawk, but uh, with the more rapid roll and a bit more velocity factoring going on, high alpha stuff. Uh, you asked about highlights, and. Um, oh, yeah, and I haven't answered that question yet. But uh, awards, did you get as far as that? Uh, no, don't worry. I have established that the uh, Swedish Air Force SK 60. Oh, I agree with this. Fantastic. It won the King Hussein Memorial Sword for the best overall flying demonstration. Excellent. And that's the extent of the information I've been sent at this stage. That combined the nice um, smoke system and the music accompanying it, which wouldn't have gone out on the live broadcast for the right reasons, unfortunately, but for anyone enjoying the display here, they'll have enjoyed the um, combination of some well-chosen music and yeah. some lovely, gentle and uh, surprising aerobatics as you say the yeah. rolling circle yeah I was, I was really hoping it would win an award and uh, i thought it would maybe get uh, a paul bowen trophy for the best overall jet demonstration or perhaps the award for the uh, best overseas participant um i kind of hoped it would get the best overall display award um i i, I didn't think it would but i was rooting for it um, so yeah really pleased about that And I think the other two uh, displays that I'd have to pull out as highlights, uh, Finnish F-18 on the Sunday uh, was absolutely outstanding. And there are foul as well. Yeah, and I'm trying to think which of the Grippens was my pick of the bunch. I think the... I'd go Swedish Grippen C yes, for the Grippens. That's, uh, certainly I've pulled out more slow moments here from that display than anything else. And here we have the departure of another Belgian F-16AM Fighting Falcon.
we were talking about the check grip in there and um, the both of those if, displays you're on the, always on the lookout for the little moments of uh, dump and burn action so the, the aircraft venting fuel and then the reheat lighting it and yesterday I was watching our uh, I think it would have been a validation display I was watching back and talking Adam through the moments that the, he should be a little bit tighter hoping for uh, little bits of flame to um, ignite behind the aircraft which does make for a good bit of material uh, didn't catch so much yesterday, did we, on the uh, on the Gripen? But um, during the rehearsal displays, there's some lovely bits and pieces which will make it into the uh, highlights program of Royal International Air Tattoo 2023. Available on watch.planestv.com in a couple of few months' time. So if you have already subscribed to watch the weekend's action, and actually now's a great time to subscribe. <laughs> I would say that, wouldn't I? Yeah. But you've got three... Do people deserve a discount code? Since the show's finished, should we do a little discount code for anyone who's missed the action and hasn't yet subscribed? How many likes are we on? Oh, that says 142. I'd be disappointed if that was the case. Let's refresh that. Let's, let's concentrate on the Saab takeoff, shall we, rather than messing about with my mobile phone? Seven hundred and seventy-two likes. Well, so we did have a Hungarian uh, Gripen in the staff. Yes, so we we did. It was our only uh, Hungarian contribution to the show this year. So that must have passed me by, perhaps when I was uh, chasing, well, waiting for F4s in the middle of the airfield. And so seven hundred odd likes. I tell you what, if we do get it up to a thousand likes. I'll go set up a discount code for anyone who would be interested in watching back the weekend's flying. And as Adam has already mentioned, our back catalogue of content on the streaming service at watch.planestv.com. And for anyone who has joined us recently, just to explain a little bit more about that, that's a, a dedicated airshow streaming service, not just live broadcasts, but also uh, edited programmes, DVDs and other content stretching back to, to 1989. So. Uh, a huge amount of airshow content to enjoy and if you are feeling nostalgic of a winter evening it's lovely to be able to uh, pop some Mildenhall action from the 90s on for example and uh, you can do that if you are a subscriber to watch.planestv.com well, I've mentioned these on previous streams and I am sorry I didn't get to the play button on them but I've got four VHS tapes SVHS tapes and that's not as awful as it sounds it's well shot material from Air Tattoo in 1993 um, that's never seen the light of day actually and it, I do, I am determined given it's uh, 93, where are we, 30 years on it seems like a sensible opportunity to go back through that material I know Adrian who shot it, my father who sat downstairs uh, looking after some of the kit um, he's very keen that we get that uh, onto that service and that's one of our winter projects is capturing those older tapes just want to, uh, to mention something I've spotted in the chat, which is Piotr has just recognised the logo on my cap, um, the Antidotum Airshow cap, yes, representing the Antidotum Airshow here at Riyadh, I suppose. <laughs> So how are we doing? Are we running to schedule? We've we got the... Uh, I mean, we never do, of course. But, uh, I, I, I already looked at the schedule. I opened it about 20 minutes ago and I decided that everything was in incomprehensible order <laughs> and certain things that weren't supposed to have happened yet had already happened and lots of things that were supposed to have happened hadn't happened and therefore uh, it was probably a bit of a futile exercise trying to extract any uh, useful information from that.
I'm going to guess that we have an arrival incoming uh, just based on the fact that the Hungarian Gripen is holding short. We've got uh, what looks like an F-35 uh, taxiing out to our right. He looks a bit well. more eager, doesn't he? Yes, yes maybe uh, the Gripen is waiting for the F-35, uh, which c could potentially be uh, the it's American very... example. Is it's it the RAF F-35B? On static for the first time, I think you mentioned. Yes, I, I, I believe so. First time we've had an RAF-operated F-35B uh, on static display here at the air today. We've had static F-35s quite a few times, stretching all the way back to 2016, but uh, not a Royal Air Force UK-based example. I suppose those 2016 aircraft still effectively US-based at that point. Yes. Yes, and one Air of them was an RAF uh, aircraft, but based in the US uh, with the operational conversion unit there. Uh, but the other two were US Marine Corps aircraft. Or possibly it was an RAF pilot flying US Marine Corps jet, actually. I seem to remember um, UK markings. Right. Big shout out to Lee Horton, thank you. Glad you enjoyed the coverage. Well, that was uh, quite a special moment for me because the, apart from that first year in 2016, that is the first time I've ever seen an RAF F-35 employing afterburner. We've seen uh, F-35s performing flypast at air shows on a number of occasions, but, uh, well, Cosford uh, earlier this year being an example of that, but the aircraft actually not permitted to use afterburner on that occasion. Uh, so, lovely to see such a sprightly departure there. Bit of burner bit of a wing rock, nice climb. I think that's uh, one of the best showings by uh, an RAF F-35 that I've ever seen. I, they, I do recall um, you got a nice burner shot of the F-35 at Riyadh 2019, or possibly last year. One of those, no, it, it was 2019 uh, during the fly pass there. Made it into the souvenir program and the trailer for it, but there is some very nice material in that 2019 programme. It was uh, one of those weather weekends that yes. provided some excellent opportunities for... I attended on a different day. Well, you were there every day. I attended on the Sunday, which had some uh, bad luck uh, weather-wise and serviceability-wise. Um, so I didn't get to see that F-35 pass. We've got an aircraft doing a run and break above us, an F-16 by the look of things. Grippens and dump and burn. We got a lovely shot of the uh, Hungarian Gripen doing a, a dump and burn in the flying display at React last year. Yeah, a good portion of that display focused entirely on generating that effect. Yes. A half loop rolling, uh, maintaining it oh, inverted a, as you yep. well, allow uh, the fuel to dump and then uh, 
into the knife edge, if I remember rightly. As, I think uh, just the, roll the through 180 and, and, and reheat in and pull. And um, actually not pull, is it? It sort of keeps that down line. So whose F-16 do we have here? I thought it was Spanish markings, but... Well... Or, uh, Belgium, maybe. It must be Belgian because, uh, well, Spain don't operate yet. No. <laughs> I think... So I have a focus assist on here, which adds a red ring around everything that's in focus, which is lovely. But and Maybe the return of one of those Belgian examples we saw departing a short time ago. Uh, no, actually, the red ring... It's Danish! <laughs> the red ring was there. <laughs> it wasn't my imagination. I, I can see why that would orange. look like a Spanish ramble. <laughs> I was getting confused with F-18s, which we have seen here recently at SSU. Yep. Uh, last year being a, a good example, and uh, had a special tail on that occasion as well. Very impressive display, and uh, probably uh, the, the standout element of it, the Spanish uh, EF-18M display, is the uh, high alpha pass, uh, which is uh, extraordinary. I did measure it once, and it came to uh, around about 30 degrees of alpha, don't see that very often from a non-thrust vectoring aircraft. Uh, we've got another aircraft in the, in the pattern above us. Uh, gosh, what's this? It's giving us a, a fly past, whatever it is. That is a Rafale. That is a Gripen, correction. the Royal Air Force or potentially a Hawk Mark 167 of the Qatari Air Force. I should say the Qatar Emiri Air Force. Let's take a look at those markings. If we zoom right in, that looks Qatari to me. Uh, they contributed a pair of Hawks from the Joint British Qatari uh, Training Unit, RAF, Le uh, RAF Leeming. So a uh, UK based aeroplane. First of these were delivered to Qatar in 2021, a total of nine to be delivered. And as I mentioned from the number 12 squadron, that joint British Qatari training squadron. We also have a joint British Qatari typhoon squadron. We saw one of their typhoons at Riyadh last year.
you can hear the uh, lump. So the noisy background uh, drowning us out there. I think probably SU-22 prepping for its departure. I've done a bit of filming around those on... Um, just where would that have been? I'd probably check Republic NATO days. Yeah. And they seem to have to sit on 100% throttle for a very long... Well, a very high throttle setting once they've started. I'm not sure what's going on there. but I'm checking for leaks or something. Well, the noise not coming from the chipmunk on, on screen. No, we decided it probably hadn't engaged reheat. <laughs> uh, German uh, tornadoes lining up to depart, I notice. We'll see them creep into shot behind the chipmunk very shortly. This is a, a chipmunk T10 version. The chipmunk being one of the uh, only aircraft, one of only two aircraft types still been operated by all three branches of the British military. The uh, Army Air Corps, the Royal Air Force and the Royal Navy. Uh, the other aircraft to have that distinction is the Gazelle. Of course, we've, we've been seeing those over the uh, course of the last few days as well. Germans still stationary, so do we think we have something else on its way in or out? So did the Gripen that overflow has actually land, or was it? Uh, do you know, I don't remember. Didn't did it? It sort of did a break over the airfield. This, this sort of thing happens after a few days here at Fairford, uh, and especially a few hours in, and we do start questioning what we have and haven't seen <laughs> already. <laughs> it all sort of blends into one uh, happy mashup of aviation. Uh, but We had just had the Hungarian take off. It's conceivable that he was um, chasing down the F-16 to help him out, but who knows. That uh, F-16, it was uh, noted in the chat, and I can't remember who by, but uh, the uh, special scheme Danabrog F-16 of the Danish Air Force has had a technical problem, so perhaps coming in with uh, spare parts or some other way of helping out that, uh, that aircraft. Such a shame we didn't see that fly yesterday, because uh, we saw it on the Friday. In fact, Friday would have been the only time uh, when it flew uh, for the public, and a very nice display and one that we haven't seen at the Air Tattoo since 2011. Looks like we are having some other light aircraft departing off to our left, just uh, entering the runway at the midpoint and uh, turning left to depart immediately. One of them looked at a glance like another chipmunk. Can you get a better look at them, Ian? It's a P-51 rolling from the midpoint, which is ah. quite something. Yes, that'll be Francis Dell, perhaps. Over from Germany, Flying Legends GmbH. It's not an aircraft we see very often in UK skies. And the aircraft we missed then, likely to be the... Oh, possibly the Sea Fire. Well, uh, the T-6, which also comes from Flying Legends, I would say, uh, quite likely they departed as a pair. Let's try and grab a shot. So it's part of the sort of mission here is to document everything as much as anything else in the best possible quality and <laughs> K 
cue the aircraft. strong wind breeze and the wobbly shaky material <laughs> of a uh, T6. Not the best documentation of that aircraft presence at Air City, but uh, it's in the bag. We've got an aircraft out to our front, it looks like a C-130, and it could well be uh, traffic uh, operating from uh, Bryce Norton. Although not one of our own C-130s, because uh, the Royal Air Force, of course, retired for Hercules last month. I would say it's looking much too close to Fairford to be Bryce traffic, and I wonder if it is either the Emirati or Saudi C-130 support aircraft. just about to make out the shape of the tail now. It's looking a lot like a, a Hercules tail. And this is going to be quite a short final approach by the look of things. Quite high and fast as well, perhaps a run and break. I think wheel's down, I think he's uh, going straight in. All right you are, yes. We've got the advantage of a very long lens to, to crash in and see what's going on. Nice bit of smoke. Yeah, you'll see evidence of slight crosswind as the aircraft crabs into wind. Yeah, that's quite dramatic and surprising because the wind is, yeah, there's a crosswind component, but I would have estimated it's maybe only 30, 30 degrees offset to the runway at the moment, just from, from how it feels standing up here. But that was quite a substantial crab. So, whose Hercules is this? Let's try and look at the flag on the tail, if there is one. Saudi. Yeah, so this aircraft uh, here in a supporting role. Uh, supporting the participation of the Saudi Hawks. It's one of uh, two aircraft here in that role. The other is an Airbus A330 multi-role tanker transport on the static display. Tornado time. Oh, nice, nice. The landing lights are on. <laughs> it's tonker time. thoroughly enjoyed the uh, two-ship tornado takeoffs over the last few days, uh, yesterday and during its practice. Uh, looks like just the one lined up at the moment, the other still parked. I can't see it at all actually. And just about to creep into your shot, I don't know <laughs> who's live at the moment, but... Uh, <laughs> Is that a fake red arrow, or we haven't had any with technical problems as far as I know. But here goes the first of our German tornadoes. Germans providing two different variants of the tornado here for their flying display. One tornado IDS, which stands for interdiction and strike, and one tornado ECR, which is optimized for the uh, suppression of enemy air defenses. They both look pretty much identical externally. It's one of uh, the two of three types of tornado uh, that have existed over the years. The other was formerly operated by Germany, but has since been retired. That is the tornado ADV. And that was an interceptor version with more powerful engines. We knew it as the Tornado F3 in British service. Four aircraft here looking like they're off on a joint mission of some kind. I did spot someone say in the chat that they're up in the uh, low flying zones heading ah. for some departures. 
Well, no. I hope, hope these are heading your way. <laughs> yes. So uh, we've got oh, the nice. two Rafales uh, from the Ame Delejo del Espas and then uh, the Finnish Hornets. In both cases, the primary flying display aircraft, which have special markings, but also the spare. And if I remember rightly, the uh, well, it looks like it, looking over your shoulder at your screen, the spare Rafale is a, a B model, a twin seater, which we don't see at air shows very often designed for the training role, but actually they've ended up using it in the ground attack role, uh, similarly to the F-15 with a weapon systems operator. This was an outstanding display at the Rafale. It's a ridiculous roll rate, the fastest roll rate of any fourth generation fighter, 270 degrees per second. Was a um, sprightly departure. Yeah, the second uh, wing dip down at the far western end there. We uh, have made for some excellent photographs for yes. 90 degrees. And uh, everyone down in Park and View West will, I'm sure, be very happy about that because it's uh, it's a bit of a gamble going down there for departures. A lot of stuff rotates uh, down at this end of the runway and is well, perhaps at 500, 500 feet, maybe even higher. So uh, they are those pilots keeping it low and giving them a special wing rock of their own. Uh, that'll go down really well. And the slice hold up between the two departures at the Rafales being a something or other. There was a runway closed for a moment. Something else to cross, presumably. Well, I can't see anything else that's crossed the runway. Perhaps it was could have been something else entirely, could have been someone uh, spotting some FOD perhaps. It is still pretty breezy. Some runways closed for birds before now. Or even a vehicle crossing somewhere. So the two Finnish FA-18C Hornets the leader of the flying display aircraft with a special tail and if you uh, get a chance during this takeoff 
Uh, do look closely at that tail because it includes both the finished flag but also the outline of a hornet quite neatly intermeshed with each other. And this was an exceptional display, uh, not least because of the extraordinary uh, rate of onset of both G and Alpha. Uh, the aircraft snapping to the vertical over the course of uh, no more than about three seconds. It's the sort of manoeuvrability you might normally expect to see from an F-22 when they perform this sort of imitation Cobra manoeuvre uh, in the... Uh, uh, Raptor demo team's display routine. Uh, the Finnish Hornet at times I thought was reminiscent of that and particularly a manoeuvre they fly called the hat where the aircraft pulls abruptly to the vertical and then pushes negative G nose over uh, back into level flight and that whole manoeuvre takes place in just a thousand feet of uh, vertical airspace. Still a good few years to enjoy the Finnish Hornet at shows. They're going to uh, start winding the fleet down in the late 2020s, but relatively recently they selected the F-35A as its eventual replacement. Be interested to see what they can muster when it comes to F-35 solo displays when the time comes. So taxing down from our left at the moment, we have, oh, quite a sight indeed. We've got two a200 tornadoes of the Italian Air Force and we also have the Sukhoi Su-22M fitter one of the real stars of the static display just crossing the runway that is quite a sign probably the last time we will see a fitter at least uh, a military operated fitter at the air tattoo because the Polish Air Force which is the last operator of the type in uh, the European Union uh, is due to retire it in 2024. It, along with the MiG-29, is being replaced with the Korea Aerospace Industries FA-50 Fighting Eagle. That's the light combat variant of the uh, T-50s we saw being flown here at Riat by the Black Eagles last year. Those first FA-50s arrived in Polish service, arri arrived in country in Poland, just in the last week or so. Initially, FA-50GFs, which stands for Gap Filler, uh, but they will soon be supplemented by FA-50PLs, which are Block 20 versions with beyond visual range air-to-air -air capability uh, and air-to-air -air refueling probes. Also taking to the runway, we have the Norwegian Air Force Historical Squadron's Vampire FV-52, their single-seater, which as we will shortly show you, if we aren't showing you already, uh, features Italian markings. We are showing you already. So yeah, on the screen now, the Vampire FV-52 in Italian markings for the Italian Air Force Centenary celebrations, which, as I've mentioned already, have been a, a major feature of this year's show, both in the flying display and even more notably in the static display. This, one of the stars of that commemoration. And it looks like uh, we're going to come into a very busy period shortly because uh, in addition to that we also have 
the uh, NATO Airbus A330 multi-role tanker transport holding down at the far left-hand end of the runway, the 09 end, and waiting to enter, and uh, presumably backtrack at a convenient moment. But the tornado, uh, sorry, the uh, vampire, uh, turning round just in front of us and lining up to depart from the midpoint. So uh, hard to believe looking at it glinting in the sun uh, that that aircraft entirely made out of wood. The first jet aeroplane to be operated by the Italian Air Force. It came into Italian service in 1952. So uh, Ian's just stepping downstairs to uh, do a bit of footage processing, leaving me alone to uh, take over the camera work and also continue trying to talk you through the action at the same time. Uh, he's dealing with some of the GoPro material that will be making its way into our uh, souvenir programme from Riyadh 2023. If uh, you've joined us recently and haven't heard about that, we have an aviation streaming service, watch.planestv.com. It costs £10 a month to subscribe and that is where you can find uh, all of our all, the, all of the live coverage from Riyadh 2023 that hasn't been here on YouTube i.e. the three show days Friday Saturday and Sunday in addition to that you will also find uh, a large back catalog of aviation programs stretching all the way back to 1984 and that includes uh, some Riyadh uh, edited souvenir highlight videos sort of two three hours in length featuring uh, the best of the action at any given edition of the air tattoo, plus cockpit footage and, and material recorded, recorded around the showground, uh, as well as the displays themselves. So we will be producing one of those for Riyadh 2023. And it sounds like we've got some lovely cockpit footage to include in that for you. Expecting that video to come out in uh, well, probably this autumn. About three months from now is our target. I'm hearing Ian going through the material uh, sort of live uh, in the studio and talking in my ear about some of the things that he's found in there. Al Fazam, we've got cockpit footage of, so that'll be absolutely breathtaking, I'm sure. We've got the Saudi Hawks as well and Patria Aguila. The Spanish Harriers. Is that not Patria Aguila but the Spanish Harriers? Okay. Well, and Aguila. So three big jet teams and it's always always really interesting to see those formation displays from another perspective uh, but the Spanish Harriers as well I'm sure looking out of the cockpit window down at the ground and the ground not moving that's going to be quite a sight I'm sure. If you do subscribe to watch.planestv.com you'll also get access to some of our upcoming live streams a lot of them go out for free here on YouTube. We try to put out as much for free as we can. That will include the old Buckingham Air Show and some of the Duxford Flying Day uh, events in the coming weeks. Uh, but if you want to uh, support the work we do, then do subscribe to watch.planestv.com. That will get you some of the extra uh, paid for live streams, including the Duxford Battle of Britain Air Show in September. A sky full of Spitfires and Hurricanes. You can't really sniff at that.
So taking off uh, to our left, entering at the midpoint and going straight off from there, we have a Scottish Aviation Bulldog. Nice wing rock for those at Park and View West. And I'm also going to show you just down in this direction the NATO Airbus A330 multi role tanker transport, which I had mentioned before. That part of the uh, collaborative uh, NATO unit which provides aerial refuelling facilities for a number of NATO states and member states. Not seeing any immediately obvious activity off to our right at the moment, apart from that uh, fitter that we saw taxiing out earlier. That is currently uh, stuck behind the Saudi A3, uh, as the Saudi C-130H support aircraft. And uh, I think I see the reason for that delay, which is landing lights on final approach. This is looking to me at this stage like a C295 or potentially a CN235. I think we are due a uh, French Air and Space Force CN235, which is a relatively rare uh, air show participant. Certainly much rarer than the larger and more modern C295, of which we've already seen a few examples today. People have been asking in the chat whether there is a discount code for watch.planestv.com. We did mention it. We've hit a thousand likes. We promised that if we did that, we would set up a discount code. Uh, Ian is working on it down in the trailer right now. We'll bring you all the details in a few minutes. Coming in uh, to enter the runway on our right-hand side, we also have a C-17. I'm saying C-17 with a certain amount of caution because it might be a Royal Air Force example. Indeed, it is a Royal Air Force example, in which case we are obligated to call it a Globemaster C-1 instead. <laughs> This is looking increasingly to me like a French CN235. A bit tricky to make out the precise operator at this stage. Yeah, that is indeed a French CN-235. Now, uh, CN-235 is actually quite interesting. It's a joint European-Indonesian project for an aircraft with both civil and military utility. It's been used by a number of uh, Indonesian airlines, in fact, but in extremely limited numbers. Uh, but it then served as the basis for the wholly European C-295, which, as I've mentioned, is a much more common sight, and not just at air shows, but in the hands of military operators generally. Arriving bang on time, according to the schedule which I have in my hands. 
Okay. Shall we talk about that coupon code? Of course, let's do those basics first. Thank you for those of you in the chat uh, hampering at the bit, uh, champing at the bit, I should say, for that one. Um, Adam was mentioning the programme we're going to release and, of course, all the live broadcasts over the show weekend, which have gone out on watch.planestv.com. It's a subscription service. It costs £10 a month. Um, if you use the coupon code, because we hit 1,000 likes, I said we'd uh, set up a coupon code. Use the coupon code DEP23, so that's capital D E P number two, number three, as in departures 2023, not Johnny Depp, which I now realise is the more uh, common use of that term. But DEP23, that will get you 20% off your first three months. And I've done it for three months because we expect to be releasing the Air Tattoo program within that time period. We should commit to that at this point because we did not manage to get it turned around as quickly as I'd have liked to have done. I, sh I, I wouldn't say we, I'll say I didn't manage to get it out uh, as early as I'd like to have done last year. But um, Well, when I get home on Tuesday, my first order of business is to draw up the running order and write the commentary script for, for Ben Dunnell and have that done by the end of the week. That makes for a very nice refined programme actually, Ben giving his making use of his encyclopedic knowledge and, and Adam producing a very nice script to just tie the whole event together. Got lots of themes going on, lots of aircraft in the static as well as the um, flying display itself that, that is nice to bring into that yeah. nice programme. And it's a tricky thing because there's links between so many of these aircraft and often multiple links between multiple aircraft and trying to find that sort of one combination where there's a single thread that runs through the whole programme is, is really tough. And we'd normally use the better weather day, you know, as our sort of basis for um, the programme, one of the Saturday or Sundays. And I suppose Sunday is that, but still we'll have things that only occurred on the Friday. And in the case of the Royal Jordanian Falcons, only occurred in rehearsal. But yeah, sad sadly. for them, but we do have the material to yeah, give a full impression of the of Air Tattoo 2023. So lined up now, we have the C-17, sorry, the Globemaster C-1 of the uh, Royal Air Force, um, an aircraft I, that... Uh, I, I slapped his uh, wrist. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, let's, let's keep quiet while the aircraft departs and I'll talk a little bit about it afterwards. See a little wildlife around the airfield. Not as big as the deer that we, we had running around at, S, at NATO days that year. I don't think I was there for I, that I, one. I, I'm so sorry, I ruined your train of thought on the uh, Oh yes. C1. Well, I was just going to say it's, uh, it's got a relatively interesting history in RAF service, um, not least because we kind of ended up with it by mistake. Um, it was leased, or four examples were leased from Boeing uh, due to delays to the A400M Atlas program, or the A400M Grizzly as it was then known. And uh, it was uh, only after that that it was decided to then buy those aircraft outright and indeed buy some additional examples. Uh, and nowadays, as it transpired, they provide a, a crucial part of the RAF's uh, air mobility capability, being by far the largest transport aircraft that they operate. Um, and indeed one of only two types of uh, fixed-wing transport aircraft of any kind. Tactical transport, that is. Obviously we've got uh, uh, various... Voyager. Yeah, we've got the Voyager and we've got various VIP transport aircraft as well, the Envoy, for example. But uh, yeah, and so as far as tactical transport goes, it's the uh, Atlas C-1 and the Globemaster C-1. That's it now, now that we've lost the Hercules. Just in the last few weeks we've lost the Hercules. I'm sad I never got to see one of the um, Hercules tactical displays of old. Yeah, I am always drawn to talk about those uh, when we see a Herc. That 
you know, it was a mainstay of air shows in the 90s, you know, the case and run. You'd get a rapid, uh, like get an impressive tactical departure of some kind, and probably just a circuit, landing back, deploying a couple of Land Rovers for troops in the back, smoke bombs and all the rest of it. Mm. Yeah, it's quite fun. And then some, often you'd get a demonstration of a, um, kind of show my ignorance here, but uh, a low level uh, drop of supplies of some kind, sort of low level with the ramp down. Yeah, and that's sure. a capability that has not been fully replaced uh, by the A400M, uh, the Atlas C1. It will be able to take on that capability in due course, but it's something that's still being built up at the moment. So the fit are holding back from the runway there, not much going on. Are we, yes. are we looking at an arrival potentially? Uh, potentially. Uh, that is often what transpires to be the case when we do have these lulls in proceedings. Whatever happened to the two Italian tornadoes? Well, they've disappeared uh, behind the A400 over the north side there. So they were in front of this 22. They're parking up over there. The, uh, the NATO Voyager that uh, I pointed the camera at probably a good 10 minutes ago now is still sitting down at that end of the runway, which would indicate that something is about to happen because I'm sure they'll want to get that backtracking and down to the 27 threshold as soon as reasonably possible. Uh, I noticed a few people asking in the chat about the uh, departure time of the uh, ME262. Uh, just to repeat that, we are expecting that to depart at 2 o'clock local time. But do bear in mind that this is a movable feast and uh, Very much it so. might well change, so do stick with us throughout, I suppose, would be the uh, answer if you'd like to catch that. Okay, Meteor lining up. Ah. Yes, now this is an aircraft that we'd kind of hoped to see in the flying display, uh, flying alongside the Lancaster as part of the Sky Tanker theme, and recreating the very first tests of the uh, hose and drogue method of air to air refueling developed here in the UK by Cobham uh, in the late 1940s. And uh, that very first test occurred not between a Meteor and a Lancaster, but between a Meteor and a Lancastrian, which was uh, a slightly more advanced development of the Lancaster. And unfortunately, the Meteor being moved to static display, uh, so we weren't able to see that. But it looks like we also have uh, a large aircraft in the background. Yeah. Could that be the Globemaster heading back to Bryce Norton? I think it's Bryce traffic, yeah. Well, here goes Martin Baker's modified Meteor T7. see a typhoon also waiting to enter the runway now down at our right hand end can't help wondering if that might be the uh, Qatari example it is
telltale sign of the sound of a harrier as well in the background. Yes. The whine of a harrier. Well, hopefully those will appear on the taxiway just the other side of the Fiat enclosure in the next few minutes. They are due to depart at around this time. So that would be our... Did, did we establish whose typhoon this was? I think, I think you're right about let's push in a bit. You can show you. That does look like a Qatari flag on the tail. Yes, there's a Qatari roundel there as well. It's yeah, so F marked uh, typhoon, is it? Nope. Yeah, it's got a, a, a nice relatively subtle grey camouflage scheme, the Qatari Typhoons and indeed the uh, Qatari Combat Fleet in general. Uh, but this particular aircraft is actually in the process of being delivered. It comes uh, straight from uh, BAE Systems in Wharton. I uh, wonder if we're going to get another arrival because there continues to be nothing actually on the runway. There, there's a very distant speck that I've just spotted A400. Could be Bryce traffic, could be the uh, Belgian air component A400M, uh, which is here in the supporting role for the F16 in the flying display. Yes. I would say, based on the fact the landing lights are on, it's heading straight towards us, and all the other traffic is holding short of the runway, but this is not Bryce traffic. This is inbound to Fairford, and I would say most likely that Belgian air component. A400M. Since we've identified it, I think I'll zoom out to serve you all from that horrible wobbly material. Yes, it's, is, uh, it's a bit breezy and we are on a roof, very exposed here. It's always a judgment call about where to put the longer lens. You know, you are at more exposed up high, but you do have the better vantage point. And we uh, tried swapping it round over the course of the week, so. Uh, would cover both bases, we would have that uh, tight camera up here with a good vantage point some of the time, but also on other days we'd play it safe and put it down at ground level and make sure that say, it was slightly smoother footage. We're still getting buffeted by the wind even at ground level, it does make things pretty difficult for us, especially on Saturday, wherever that camera had gone on Saturday, it <laughs> would have been a challenge because it was gusting 40 knots plus. But the departures, you would like to think that most stuff is pretty close up, so on the mid-range of the lens, even a, even the stronger gusts aren't too much of a problem. Yeah. Su-22 taking the runway, looks like we're going to get rid of him prior to the 400 arrival. Get rid of him sounded unkind, because extraordinary aircraft to see. Yeah. And so uh, rare now. As I already said, almost certainly the last time. Drinking that in because, well, who knows if we'll ever get to see that again. Such a time of change for the Polish Air Force, moving on from that uh, former Soviet fleet, the Big 29, the Su-22, and uh, employing instead some of the, the latest uh, fighters and trainers that the West has to offer, the F-35A, uh, soon to enter Polish service, also the M346 Bielik, uh, recent addition to their fleet, and of course, as I mentioned, the F-A-50, Initially GF, but later the FA-50 PL Fighting Eagle from Korea, the first operator of that type in Europe. So yeah, the Polish Air Force very much changing in character, almost before our very eyes. 
I remember some great Polish MiG-29 displays back when they had a full solo display uh, oh, at yeah. Cosford a few years back, but also here at the Air Tattoo in 2015. Yeah, that was something special, that departure. Proving the Earth is indeed round. <laughs> Using the curvature of the Earth to aid it getting airborne. Notice the nose wheel came up quite early and then, oh no, quite full of fuel. Oh, uh, let's see if this is a Belgian A400M. I suspect it is. And then the Qatari Typhoon is now uh, lining up on the runway. Atari Typhoon has now lined up and I see one of the Italian A200 Tornadoes has also reappeared. Oh, and a second Typhoon also holding short of the runway for now but uh, presumably one of our next departures. It'll probably be a little while before we see that typhoon take off because out to our left the A400 is still on the runway. Uh, if it is here in the supporting role then I imagine it'll be taxiing off to the north side which might involve the aircraft backtracking. Potentially, it'll uh, head on to the southwest loop, which is currently where the uh, NATO A330 multi role tanker transport is waiting, and backtrack later on, giving a chance to, to clear some of this backlog of departures because we've got at least three fast jets there waiting to depart. Oops, sorry. That was the sound of me uh, knocking Ian's elbow, by the way, and apologising. <laughs> It's a bit tight up on top of this trailer sometimes. Oh, we've had uh, a phantom suddenly appear above us. And the typhoon is rolling. I wonder what the cause could be of this extra little bit of phantom action that we suddenly find ourselves enjoying. Do not question that which you receive, receive Adam. <laughs> it's a wonderful um, sight to see the aircraft again. Yeah, I wonder. Perhaps done his duty in the uh, Welsh Valleys and returning for fuel. Who knows? Uh, is, there a, is there a sky van up today, perhaps? So that Belgian A400M has indeed uh, taxied onto the southwest loop and is waiting to re-enter the runway and backtrack. It'll have to wait quite some time because there's the phantom to get on the ground, there's some more fast jets to clear out of the way. Uh, and of course there is also that NATO A330 MRTT in the queue in front of it. So we will be seeing that A400M again at some point, but possibly not for a while. 
And then uh, I assume we'll see it depart at some point today as well. I saw a question in the chat, someone asking, do visitors get this day just to enjoy the departures? And the answer to that is kind of yes. The, the air show here at Fairford is such a, an enormous spectacle with so many aircraft that departures in their own right provide almost a full day of entertainment. And the showground itself is not open. There's three very specific photo areas, a, a, a photo pit at each end known as park and view and then also the free app grandstand for those who have purchased the spotter pack. Free app standing for Friends of the Royal International Air Tattoo. That is the blue grandstand that you sometimes see uh, in our shots. And appearing from behind the free app grandstand, we have two very keenly awaited aircraft indeed. The pair of Spanish EAV 8B2 Matadors that is the Spanish designation for this particular variant of the Harrier. And following them, the Spanish Navy Cessna Citation, which we saw arriving earlier today, that is acting as their support aircraft. We have so much enjoyed seeing the Spanish Harriers in the flying display, or the, the Spanish Harrier Singular in the flying display. We've seen a lot of Harrier action with two practice displays uh, prior to the show and then a full flying display on both Saturday and Sunday. Very energetic. We had uh, the likes of a high G turn, we had aileron rolls, we had of course the typical hover demonstration and uh, very glad to say that we do have cockpit footage from the Harrier and that will be included in our souvenir programme. We've also got uh, an aircraft on final approach and we're just swinging a camera around onto that for you. What do we have here? It's an interesting uh, tailplane configuration. Yeah. Is that the side, Looks old. like a Saab. Saab 2000. So, is that Swedish? Or? Uh, it could be the support aircraft for the Saab Gripen E that we've seen both in the flying and static display. Expected to be one of our last departures today, the Gripen E. Floaty landing. All right. The gusty day.
So the tornado and uh, typhoon at on either side of the runway. Anticipate what our other other name. Oh no, midway. Okay. It's another so. Reams Cessna product. Taking to the runway at the midpoint. Probably just going to turn left. Yeah, turning left, departing uh, straight away. Appreciate everyone in the chat keeping us informed, by the way. We don't have um, any direct uh, link to uh, the uh, air traffic or organisation here uh, informing us of all of the latest developments. Uh, so good to hear in the chat an explanation for the F4 returning to us, which is apparently due to air traffic control problems encountered en route. Hey, maybe that means we'll see it take off again in a, an hour or two. The more times the merrier. Thank you, friends. a queue that's developing for departures at the moment. Lined up at various points at the moment, we've got at least one typhoon, at least one tornado, possibly two. Two Harriers, Citation, A330, which is now entering the runway at our left-hand end to backtrack at long last. And I can also see quite a lot of blinking lights over in the, uh, the, the, the north side apron, the northeast loop. And it's a little bit difficult with the naked eye to make out what's going on. We'll put the camera on the A330 for you. Uh, so that's probably the most interesting development at the moment. But just doing my best to, uh, to scan the aircraft over in the distance in that direction. I would say the blinking lights are on an assortment of Grippens. Possibly both the Swedish and Czech examples. The Belgian A400M also Probably going to enter and backtrack at this point, having Let's landed see. earlier and heading off to the northeast loop. It's evil that this will be a downwind departure, the wind not uh, especially. It could yet be a departure, he's picking up some speed. Yeah, this is a treat for those on the western end, seeing that great.
and also preparing to depart, closing their canopies, a pair of F-16 CJs, also from the United States Air Forces in Europe and based at Spangdalen in Germany. We probably can't get a camera on those just because of where they are positioned relative to us, uh, but that is the cause of the noise. in the very best traditions of uh, tornado low transitions on takeoff. And a relatively rare sight these days of a hunter there, on the south side of the memory. Yeah, one of the hunters operated by the civilian company Hawker Hunter Aviation, but operated on the military register. And I believe this particular hunter is a Mark 58 variant. Single seat fighter version. We saw, um, I can't remember if it was Riyadh last year, I think it was, but we saw a, a, a training variant of uh, Hunter from the same organization here on Static uh, fairly recently in an interesting corporate colour scheme as well. So we've got the uh, A400 from our left, which I think is the Belgian example backtracking to the northeast ramp. It's been quite some time since it landed here, presumably uh, sitting Engines running for a while, waiting for uh, an opportunity to backtrack. Behind it, we also have the Greek F4 entering the runway. That presumably about to backtrack also. Well, we have this uh, momentary lull. I've been wondering if, if we have people in the chat who've been here for the for the main show on the weekend and you're now enjoying the departures from the comfort of your own home. I'd be interested to know uh, what your highlights have been from uh, attending the air show in person. Because we've talked about ours. We named the SK60 and the uh, French C135 as among our highlights. Also the Rafale Finnish F18. But but let us know what you thought was particularly enjoyable and read some of them out when we next get a moment. I meant to go on to say we've, we've been very fortunate to see the, the Saudis, Alpha San and Red Arrows and I'm almost certainly missing another team, uh, the Spanish of course. Aguilar. Yeah. And you know all of them wonderful. Yeah. The, the Spanish with the enthusiasm in the uh, commentary getting oh, the crowd yes. very excited and me as uh, well. And that formation landing, I love that formation landing. That is genuinely one of my highlights of the entire air tattoo when all six aircraft came in together yesterday night. Absolutely. And the Saudis, some of the material we recorded of them, I'm afraid 
my joy, my uh, enthusiasm for doing this comes from recording very nice material of aeroplanes in good light and good dramatic skies. And we, we've certainly had some dramatic skies, and the Saudis even caught some nice light on one of the days I've been looking through the material. So that was a big highlight for me. At Alpha Sand, I haven't seen. I haven't. I don't. I think I maybe did record them in 2012 when they were here, but I don't remember. Um, I don't remember the display, and um, I, I will remember the display from this year. It was a really impressive, oh yeah, refined yeah. display, and the final fly pass, the way the smoke hangs oh, in yes. the air. It's, it's, the, I've oh, never yes. seen smoke from an aerobatic team quite like that produced by Alpha Sand. And the fact there's four colours as well. And my shot of the weekend, uh, we'll probably roll it at some point. A nice, high, a nice uh, slow motion was here recorded over all six days, five days. And um, the Alpha Zan, uh, part of that helix manoeuvre at the end with two aircraft rolling on opposite sides of the formation smoke trail. It's a really nice shot. That's the sort of thing that gets me excited, I'm afraid. So that, they go in the uh, highlights of the weekend category for me too. If we've talked long enough for our, we are uh, the stream is slightly delayed. We put a 60-second buffer in there just in case there is an incident. Um, so the uh, F4 has just vacated the runway onto the taxiway, and we've got the Hunter lined up to our right. In fact, possibly just starting to take off roll now. No, just yes, rolling. So uh, let's enjoy the wonderful and relatively rare sound of a Hawker Hunter. So we've got the Top Aces Alpha Jet A now rolling from the Canadian Red Air contractor. and the Harriers now taking to the runway. And while we have a quiet moment before the Harriers go, I just want to read out some of the answers to that uh, question that I asked. The SK-60 proving popular, Matt Foster nominated that. B-52 crabbing, yes, that was quite something. And taking out a few of the runway lights as well. REF Typhoon, that was a very solid display. And on Friday, displaying in some absolutely appalling weather conditions, but just about pulling it off in, in rather astonishing style finish F-18, got a couple of nominations as well.
well. That's uh, a lovely sight indeed. Spain has long been a Harrier operator. They had the original Harrier and then uh, they ordered the uh, AV-8B variant, the first nation to do so. That was in 1983 that they ordered their first 12 aircraft. A further eight were ordered in 1993. And they have all been upgraded to EAV-8B plus standard. All operated by 9 Squadron at Rota. Their replacement is expected to be the F-35B. That is under consideration now. And here goes their support aircraft, also from the Spanish Navy. The Citation. So taking to the runway now, we have a Typhoon, but a little bit different to the Typhoons we've seen so far today, because this is the first, and I believe the only, twin-seater to participate in the air tattoo this year, a Typhoon T3 of the Royal Air Force. Before it goes, just a few more of the highlights I've seen mentioned. The B-52 takeoff, yeah, that was great. First time I've seen one take off in person. Fantastic. And, uh, and also, some of the Gripens being mentioned. The Gripen E, which won, by the way, I can tell you the uh, Paul Bowen Trophy for the best overall fast jet demonstration. And one display we haven't mentioned yet, which probably should, is the Belgian F-16. Oh yes, I you kept, know. I meant to say that. I felt there was one more thing that I meant to say in my list of highlights. I think having seen, um, you know, a similarly stunning display two years running now, we sort of started taking it for granted. But as you said yesterday, uh, seeing something new from an F-16 display, 50 years, almost 50 years yeah. since that aircraft first flew. And that, that and they're still finding new things to do with it. As well, <laughs> this particular pilot, um, who is the fifth most experienced F-16 pilot in the world, if you want you know, anyone to display an F-16, he's got to be near the top of the list. Captain Stephen de Vries, and uh, he is really uh, extracting an awful lot of performance out of the aircraft, especially with regard to negative G, but something new for this year that I had never seen before is the yawing motion on his uh, first manoeuvre after takeoff, approaching head-on towards the crowd and then just kicking in full left rudder, full right rudder, full left rudder. And a lot of the manoeuvres inspired by uh, the movements of a snake um, and uh, Indeed, the aircraft is in a, a special paint scheme, the Dream Viper, snake-inspired. Uh, so, yeah, those uh, manoeuvres being snake-inspired as well. There's a great negative G bunt towards the crowd too, again, reminiscent of the snake. Uh, aircraft flying towards show centre, pitching up to about 45 degrees nose up and then pushing to 45 degrees nose down. And a bit of a shame for the Danish F-16 not to get uh, all their displays completed. Yeah, although we uh, did enjoy the practice in lovely conditions pre-show.
Yeah, the uh, Danish S16, for my money, is, uh, is my favourite of the special schemes here. The Danabrog scheme, marking 800 years of the Danish flags, the oldest national flag in the world. Um, applied a few years back, but retained uh, as the Danish Air Force display jet, only performing at five air shows this year as well, so quite a rare sight, and I'm, I'm very glad we did get to see that at least, at least once. I think we saw the Danish F-16 on Friday, but I can't remember if it was a standard operational grey jet or not. Well, it's interesting, the Italian tornadoes seem to be crossing the runway, but not taking off. They're going to hold on the south side to allow something else to come through and take off, did you? Or perhaps the wrong aircraft leading the formation, making way for the other. We've said before, they do like to keep us guessing. <laughs> There's some kind of choreographed dance going on. Uh, these uh, tornadoes, known in Italian service as the A200A, would probably more generally call it the Tornado IDS, uh, the interdiction strike version that I was describing earlier. And, uh, the Italian tornado fleet seen a lot of uh, active combat service in the first Gulf War in Kosovo, Afghanistan. Uh, and in the fight against Islamic State as well, but uh, it is now soon to be retired. 2025 is the out-of-service date, uh, and it will be replaced by the F-35. Italy will shortly become uh, basically a two-fighter air force with the uh, Eurofighter Typhoon, uh, the F-2000 as it's known in Italy, uh, as a, uh, an air defence fighter, and the F-35 for ground attack and suppression of enemy air defence. It's taking over from the Tornado and the AMX. What do we have taxiing out now? Is that a Gryphon? It is a Gryphon, two seat, I think. Looks like an interesting paint scheme on the rear aircraft. Is that uh, some kind of special markings which might denote it's a Gryphon E? No, you're looking on the north side, aren't you? So ah, they're Gryphons on both sides. I can see a total of three fast jets of some kind that I can't identify, plus the F-4 still waiting uh, to presumably uh, taxi to a parking spot, shut down, refuel and file a new flight plan. So how many Swedish Gryphons do we have on site, I suspect? Do we have three? Quite possibly, yes. One flying, one spare, one static. It would make sense. So I think we're looking at the grip and E over on the far side. Two seat this side, and then the what's left to see? Uh, the the grip and E's are separate, and there's three of those. Again, one flying, one spare, one static. I think there's three. So 
What's the rear aircraft over there then? It would be the paint scheme that's the giveaway for the, uh, the, for the Gryphon E. The C and E model Gryphons almost uh, in indistinguishable externally, apart from the fact that one of the Gryphon E's here has been painted up in a, a splinter style camouflage. Uh, all of the differences are internal, but there are a great many differences. Uh, for starters, a more powerful engine, about 30% more thrust. So the Gryphon E has uh, an F1, uh, has an F414 engine, which is the same engine used on the Super Hornet and uh, the. Gryphon C has an F404 engine, that's the same engine used uh, in the Legacy Hornet. Uh, additionally, the uh, Gryphon E has a more advanced active electronically scanned array radar, it's got infrared search and track, more advanced avionics, revised undercarriage and a revised fuselage layout which has created space for additional fuel and for two extra weapons hard points. So uh, unless we're going into count weapons hard points here, it's just yeah. going to be the paint scheme alone that determines uh, what sort of gripping we think this is. Well, the, there may be a clue on the far side on my camera there for the SK-60s parked up through three gripping's, quite possibly the Swedes. Yeah, I would think so. So uh, maybe the gripping ease now into the car, or possibly the Czech examples. PC just had a PC-21 taxi down the runway. This being the latest turbo trainer product from Pilatus. It'll be departing shortly uh, after spending the week on static display. An aircraft that we saw here in the flying for the first time, at least the first time in military hands last year. That was in the hands of the French Air and Space Force Academy de l'Air Mustang X-ray tactical display and they provided a very compelling demonstration of some of the uh, combat maneuvers which student pilots train on the PC-21. Uh, this is an aircraft that is very much unlike a standard turbo trainer like PC-9 that came before it. It's got vastly more power, about 50% more power, and a higher roll rate, higher turn rate, higher climb rate. Uh, it handles to all intents and purposes like uh, a fast jet. I remember spending time at Linton on News with uh, pilots who described their Tucanos as jets. I think you'd get away with that more easily with something like this. Oh yeah. <laughs> Lovely low wing rock. Uh, relatively quiet on that pass, using quite a low power setting evidently because it, it does make quite a scream on full chat. It, it is uh, the fastest single-engine turboprop aeroplane ever to enter mass production, or at least the, la the fastest to be solely powered by turboprops. But uh, the performance is more than skin deep because uh, internally it's got some hugely advanced simulation software uh, that allow the simulation of both friends and foe in uh, aerial combat in which you feel like you're part of a team fighting a collective foe uh, but actually you're the only aircraft in the sky. We've just had two ANXs taxi out, A11A Ghiblis which are on the taxiway on the far side of the runway. The rear of those in special markings to commemorate a squadron anniversary. Uh, these come from the Italian Air Force and it is the last time that we will see uh, that type here at Riyadh in Italian service. Probably the last time we'll see it here at Riyadh ever because the sole other AMX operator is the Brazilian Air Force and they have not contributed to the air tattoo, uh, at least in the flying display, since 2008. They did send a KC-390 on static display last year, uh, but that's a, a rather smaller undertaking than dispatching a, a small uh, combat jet like this. The AMX due to retire from Italian service in 2024. So as I said, almost certainly it's Riyadh Swan Song that we are seeing at the moment. Looking forward to seeing those depart, especially the special scheme aircraft. There was the uh, ground attack role in the Italian Air Force along with the Tornado, although actually at the moment uh, the few remaining examples, the around 20 remaining AMXs are used predominantly for reconnaissance.
part of the very impressive Italian Air Force contribution to this year's show to mark their anniversary. So, do we reckon these are dripping ease? Certainly the jet on the left looks like it's carrying that uh, colour scheme you were describing. Oh, uh, it's certainly been uh, very enjoyable to see the Gripen E here. This was its first participation in a British air show. You and I saw it last year at NATO Days, forming a, a remarkably stable display, I would describe it as. Um, presumably the new avionics and flight control software helping to keep that aircraft very stable in all phases of flight and that perhaps one of the reasons why it won the Paul Bowen trophy for the best solo jet demonstration uh, because the uh, awards are not just based on what display was most spectacular but also which display was um, evidently uh, uh, flown outstandingly safely and uh, to the parameters that uh, it was supposed to fly to and uh, if the display does appear quite as stable as the Gripen E often does while it's in flight, then uh, yeah, I can see why that would appeal to the Flying Control Committee. Worth reminding everyone that uh, we have a discount code available if you want to re-watch the weekend flying action on our streaming service watch.planestv.com that code is DEP23, uh, which departures 2023, but DEP23 is the discount code. Head to watch.planestv.com and that will get you a, a discount for your first three month subscription. You can rewatch all of the weekend flying action, plus, uh, hopefully, within that three month window, we are going to aim to get our souvenir program completed, complete with cockpit footage of many of these performances uh, that we've been enjoying over the weekend. and some of our upcoming live streams, including the Duxford Battle of Britain Air Show in September. Yeah, that was indeed the Gripen E. So what do we have uh, lined up on the right-hand side of the runway? We can see a tail light flashing. So that's your two-seat Gripen. Perhaps uh, Swedish or Czech? That's, that tail's saying Czech to me, but actually maybe not. Do the Czechs have two-seat Gripens? Well, that's a good question. Looks my, my initial response would be, well, yes, they must do for pilot training, but then I remembered they lease their Gripens from Saab, so it's entirely I possible see. that pilot training is largely carried out by Saab. Yeah, I see the familiar sign of a Swedish emblem on the left hand side of the fuselage there. Yeah, and we know the Swedes operate the, uh, the, the D model. Yeah, very clear on your screen now. A bit of sunlight on the jet in the eastern end park of view. And uh, uh, behind. There's a very large ladder there, that's impressive. <laughs> There's a special step ladder enclosure for people who are so inclined. Yeah, we should get you up on one of those, I Might be even wo more wobbly than this. The other two Swedish Gripens, the C models, that participated in the flying display, one as the flying display aircraft and one as the spare, have uh, also now taxied to the runway on the left hand side of the threshold taxiing out also the Royal Jordanian Falcons. Shame they haven't had quite the weekend that they anticipated uh, with uh, them only managing to get into the air for a fly past on Sunday with the Flying Scholarships for Disabled People PA28 and for a practice display on Thursday but not on well, Wednesday their practice display was but not uh, managing to perform for the public sadly. Uh, meanwhile out to our left we've got a Pilatus PC12 waiting to enter the runway, but it looks like the Gripens are going to go first. 
it is worth mentioning how what a good job they all did to get that uh, flying scholarships for the disabled fly past in yes. in a particularly tricky spell of bad weather. Sam Watno flying the PA28 and the Jordanians all, um, you know, it's marginal conditions, yep. but deciding it was good to go and Weird. getting an important uh, moment in the weekend's flying display into the flying display. Yeah, I remember us speculating that it might be cancelled as we looked out uh, to the uh, sky south of us and saw some of the clouds and rain. Yeah, the Gripen is a remarkable aircraft. It was designed in the late 80s with the Swedish doctrine of dispersed operations in mind. And therefore, it is capable of operating from very short snow-covered strips as little as 500 meters. That allows it to operate from highway strips and improvised airfields. It is also capable of very quick turnarounds between missions, as little as 20 minutes to land, refuel, rearm and take off again on its next sortie. And, uh, that's crucial for survivability at these improvised strips where you want to be in and out as quickly as possible and then potentially abandoning that strip and moving somewhere else entirely. Legos the Pilatus PC-12, similar in many ways to the TBM we saw earlier, a little larger with capacity for up to four additional passengers as compared to the TBM, but the trade-off, given that both aircraft have the same engines but very different weights, is that the PC-12 is the slower of the two, a cruise speed of just under 300 knots in most cases, as opposed to the TBM's 325, 330 knots indicated airspeed. A true airspeed, rather. It looks like the PC-12 is going to be next to depart, and then perhaps the Royal Jordanian Falcons, which will be the last of our national aerobatic teams. No, it wouldn't. We had Alpha San land again, didn't we? We did. Not sure where they attacked away, but uh, and what the reason was that the reason for that was. I should probably check the schedule and see whether they were supposed to land or not. I'd be very surprised if it wasn't a uh, planned thing. No, but we saw what we saw from the F4 and heard the uh, apparent reason for that, so it's not inconceivable that the same could have happened again. They were heading in the same direction, I think, so it's quite possible. say I can't see the Alpha Sam arrival listed on the list, although I've only been able to give it a fairly cursory glance as the PC-12 gives a very sprightly departure. Royal Jordanian Falcons have now taken to the runway to our right. With four examples of the extra 330LX, an aircraft type they took delivery of for the 2018 season. 
participating in Riyadh on an almost annual basis as part of their European Goodwill Tour, which takes place most summers. They are supported by a C-130H Hercules of the Royal Jordanian Air Force in the static display, which we'll see later today, and that aircraft is painted up in special markings, a tail that references Wadi Rum and the city of Aqaba. The Royal Jordanian Falcons are based at Aqaba, and one of the purposes of this tour is to promote tourism in the region. The German A400M now waiting to take off from our right. Germany originally ordered 60 of these, but that has been reduced to 53, 40 of which are in operation at any one time. They were intended to replace the C160 Transal in German service, although it has subsequently been decided that uh, it would be beneficial for both France and Germany to operate a more Transal-esque aircraft in terms of size. They have recently elected to uh, purchase a small fleet of six C-130 Hercules aircraft, which they operate jointly, C-130J models, three of which are equipped for aerial refueling. They serve in addition to these much larger A400Ms, which have approximately 50% more payload capacity than is available on the Hercules. This particular aircraft comes from Lufttransportgeschwader 62 from Wunsdorf in northwest Germany. And, uh, I think I'm right in saying it's the first time that we have enjoyed seeing a German A400M in the flying display here at Riyadh. Performing that lovely three ship roll demonstration with the tornadoes as part of the Sky Tanker theme. Two passes as a three ship with the droves out from the A400M and then another couple of passes by the Tornadoes demonstrating Buddy Buddy refueling. One final Tornado solo fast pass to end. I'm going to uh, repeat what I think is fast becoming my catchphrase today, but what do we have here? So we're looking at a C-295, are we? Oh, that's an official. Is that a Spanish aircraft? I've already... Spanish 295, I think. Ah, yes, the one that we saw arriving earlier supporting Arturia Aguilar. The TP-21, as it's known in Spanish service. A 
actually just a T21 rather than TP21. I'm mixing up my Spanish and Swedish designations. Yes, the T21. It's getting quite blustery here. I hope it's not coming across too much in the uh, audio and the camera work. We had a look, little look at the uh, the list and a little refresher as to what things we haven't had that we should have that might come up. We are 20 past one. It's a bit of, bit of a shift change going on downstairs with Andy taking over from Andrew. Yes, that does make things difficult on top of that. I see the Piaggio listed as a departure soon. F15. Now I can hear you mentioned the F35 starting up behind. I dare say. Yeah, 15 departing with that, they did arrive together. Yeah, quite possibly. I can see the F-35s and F-16s from the US Air Forces, Air Forces in Europe behind us have started their engines. They've been running them for quite some time, actually. But they're all now uh, canopies closed and beacons flashing. Let's see Chinook down the other end. We had a flurry of rotary action first thing, didn't we? But uh, not since. Well, you were talking about shift changes. Um, I think if it's all right with you, I might pop down and have a sandwich. Uh, in, in which Sounds case, like I'll leave you to. to his lunch. Yeah, good plan. <laughs> I'll leave you to talk through things, and I'll I'll see you in ten minutes or so. Yeah. I wonder whether the. Uh, Rotary reaction going off early in the morning, a bit of a clever thing to do for the locals potentially. Potentially quieter things getting airborne, less disruptive early in the morning. Not that nine o'clock is especially early, we were on site at half six.
There's still that shift change going on in my ear as the guy's getting comfortable. Adrian's out on camera one, camera on the wide camera. I'm just desperate to throw the extender into that wide camera and get a close-up shot, but it's quite nice to give the wide angle, give you a sense of where we are and where everything is. Just the two manned cameras today. It's a fairly simple setup. It gives us just about enough to play with to give you uh, to give us good coverage of the full show site. Actually, on a day like this, you could probably do with another two or three. So much going on on a very busy airfield. And it has turned into a glorious afternoon. The gaps between the clouds increasing, I would say. The wind also increasing. Keep moaning about that, but um, it does make the longer lens a bit more challenging. But a nice day out for everyone in free out there. And for you at home, I hope. This could have been a pretty miserable uh, departure day with some of the weather we've had over this weekend. So if, uh, since I'm not, since I'm live, Adrian, you could swing around and pick up the aircraft lining up on the runway, and then we can. Doing a bit of mid-show directing as well. No, I want to say L159 here. I haven't had a close look. Is this the Honey Badger from? It is the Alka to so the Honey Badger Council. That's a shame. This is an aircraft we're very familiar seeing in... Uh, we keep talking about Czech, the Czech show at NATO Days. It's at Ostrava. A fabulous um, bringing together of Central European and uh, further afield um, display assets. Also ground assets as well. And the Czech 159s have often performed a uh, two-ship routine. We've seen it here in the UK uh, and in the Czech Republic with flares as well, very impactful. It sounds like it was due here. Is that public knowledge, Adam? Can we talk about that? Maybe not the bike bit. <laughs> it's a shame. It sounds like we were hoping to see that in the flying display here, but... Uh, not able to bring the display due to uh, illness. Whoa, seen a big stack of chairs on a pallet looking pretty precarious in the wind. So we're quite used to seeing uh, huge numbers of F F-16s at ASL2, uh, but it feels like the Gripen's have outnumbered them this year. I suspect that might change next year with the F-16's 50th, 50th anniversary. I'm certainly hoping we might get a, uh, a gathering of the very many operators of that type here at ASL2. I have no idea if that's going to be the case, but you'd like to think so. The 50th anniversary of the aircraft's first flight.
which does sound extraordinary to say, 50 years. So whose is this? I didn't notice as it was lining up and I've missed the opportunity to see any markings. One of the Swedes. Got an SK60 uh, lining up behind, so very likely I would say. SK60, one of the award winners, as we mentioned earlier. Certainly one of, well, Adam picked it out as his, hi as his highlight from the flying display. It's up there with me. Some very nice uh, slow-mo material captured of that one. Very graceful display. I said reminiscent of a glider display. It's sort of a bit of an exercise in energy management, not underpowered by any means, but a graceful flowing aerobatic routine with some surprising bits and pieces like a rolling circle and a bit of negative G here and there. Perhaps a moment just to swing the camera around, I can see a Hercules behind Friat. Whose is that? You might well be able to see the markings on that better than I can. Oh, I can just see a marking on the tail peeping out. Perhaps not. Dana Brock. Well, hello again. I've finished my sandwich. That is rapid. Uh, Very well done. It was a rapid consumption of an egg sandwich because I wanted to um, be up here in time to watch the departure of the very specially painted SK60 currently waiting at the right hand end of the runway, which is painted up to mark 60 years of service uh, of the SK60 and it is painted. Uh, in the colour scheme of a 1930s era Swedish Air Force training aircraft. And I heard you talking just while I was eating about how tremendous that SK60 display was. It was my favourite. It was also nominated by the Flying Control Committee for the King Hussein Memorial Sword for the best overall flying demonstration. That is the top award here uh, at Riyadh. The Hercules out to our left that I heard you mentioning I can't help wondering if that is the uh, US Air Force MC-130J Commando 2 from Mildenhall. We saw the Osprey from Mildenhall departing a short time ago. But uh, we can't really, we can only see the, the front half of it at the moment, so it's a, a bit of a tricky call. While there is a bit of a pause, I might well hang, hand over you for a little while, Adam. I dare say there's some uh, emails I can throw, up, throw around. Okay. And, uh, check on a few things, if it's okay. I shall uh, move into position and take over on the camera. Yeah, so, uh, the SK60 has been a real surprise star, I think, for many of us here at Briat. Um, probably the last time we'll see it at the Air Tattoo. The type is imminently due to be retired. I said it is in its 60th year of service 
There have been numerous upgrades over the years to keep it relevant, including new engines, the fitting of uh, FJ44 turbo fans relatively recently, uh, sorry, in the 90s actually, uh, that uh, helped uh, reduce fuel consumption and noise and increase efficiency, as well as reliability and performance. The most recent set of upgrades were internal. The fitting of GPS and new cockpit instruments. Among the changes, uh, the instruments were converted from the metric system to the imperial system. the MC-130J Commando 2 that was waiting to our left and now taxiing, we're just picking that up for you. And you can see uh, the hose and drogue systems under the wings. We saw them in use during the flying display on Saturday and Sunday with a mock refueling of a US Air Force CV-22B Osprey from the 7th Special Operations Squadron also at Milton Hall on the Saturday, especially those aircraft flying in remarkably close formation, very nearly hooked up. And that was part of the Sky Tanker theme here at Riyadh, marking 100 years since the first successful aerial refuelling in 1923. At that point, a very rudimentary process that literally involved uh, a jerry can on the passenger seat of the uh, tanker, a hose, and then uh, the other end of that hose being plugged into the standard refueling filler cap on the receiver aircraft. That's how it worked in those very early days. It was here in the UK by Sir Alan Cobham of Flight Refueling Limited that more repeatable and reliable methods of aerial refueling were developed. Incidentally, Flight Refueling, UK, uh, Flight refueling Limited is the company that uh, went on to become Cobham and then Draken Europe. It was them that developed the hose and drogue system that we've seen demonstrated a number of times over the past few days by the German A400M, by this, uh, well not this MC-130, another identical MC-130 uh, which arrived on slot from Mildenhall along with the Osprey, and also by a Royal Air Force Voyager KC-2 which flew with uh, an F-18 Hornet from the Finnish Air Force and a Gripen from the Swedish Air Force. It was in 1949 that that system was developed. That specially painted SK-60 is now taken to the runway. All three of the SK-60s we have seen over the last few days have been wearing special schemes of some kind. We've had this commemorative scheme marking 60 years, as I mentioned, of the SK-60 in Swedish service. But uh, the two aircraft parked on the other side of the runway shortly to take off, the flying display jet and the spare, and the colours of the defunct Swedish National Aerobatic Team Team 60, which was last active in 2018. So I wonder if we're waiting for all three aircraft to gather on the runway for a three-ship formation departure.
the other two SK60s appear to be holding short. So we might be getting a solo departure just from this specially painted aircraft initially. these aircraft have departed I uh, can see off to our left the nose of an F-35 so I think that uh, US Air Forces in Europe fleet of F-35s and potentially also the F-16 and F-15 will be very soon to take to the runway. We see under the wings of these two aircraft, the flying display jet and its spare, two blue pods. Those are Sanders SGSC 5A smoke pods, used to great effect over the course of the display. An entirely self-contained smoke pod that can be fitted to any standard NATO 14-inch hardpoint. They are uh, very popular with aircraft and teams that like this that use standard operational aircraft because they don't require any specific modifications. The smoke system used by the Red Arrows, for example, the pod is detachable, uh, but the pipes that uh, pipe that smoke oil to the hot engine exhaust, that is a hard modification to the aircraft. And it's not always a very easy thing to achieve. And we have to look at uh, teams like Surya Kiran from India uh, who have been unable to make that modification to their Hawks and they have had to uh, revert to using uh, smoke pods. In fact, the same model of smoke pod as we're seeing from the SK-60s here. They are entirely self-contained. They generate heat at the rear. You sometimes see as they are engaged a little burst of flame and can be topped up with uh, enough smoke oil to generate about 10 minutes of smoke. Lights have just come on on one, and now both of the SK-60s. And as I mentioned, very probably the last time we'll see a Swedish Air Force or indeed any military-operated SK-60 at the show. Sweden is the last operator. There were previously two. The Austrian Air Force retired their SK-60s a few years ago.
view, as you can see, has been partially obscured. The site very much in teardown mode. You'll have seen the hospitality chalets off to our right-hand side. Well, the uh, areas in front of them, the, the garden lawns, have been very gradually disappearing over the course of today's broadcast. And now we have uh, a lorry off to our left, disassembling the first-class lounge. Plenty of activity going on now. We've got a Hercules just starting up on the other side of the runway, which is quite possibly the Saudi example we saw arriving earlier. I will have to zoom in on that and read the insignia. We have uh, F-16s taking to the runway, and we also have F-35s in the process of taxiing. And I would just like to clarify the operator of that uh, C-130 that we saw starting up that is uh, United Arab Emirates Air Force C-130H here in support of Fasan al Emirat. But here we have the Belgian F-16 AM Fighting Falcons, including in the lead their special scheme aircraft, the Dream Viper. for the Grob Tutor. On the runway now, we have the partial replacement for the Grob Tutor in Royal Air Force Service, the Prefect T1. Another Grob product, incidentally, albeit one with considerably more power and far superior climb rate, an all-glass cockpit, which makes it far more representative of the 
modern frontline aircraft operated by the RAF. This is part of an impressive contingent from the military flight training system, comprising almost every aircraft that they operate. We've seen arriving here uh, over the last few days, last week in fact, not just the Prefect, but also the Tutor, the Phenom, the Hawk, the Texan, Gather behind us, just a little bit of general aviation sneaking out. Almost without us noticing. Just had the Juno and Jupiter here from the military flight training system. They kind of snuck in as uh, pretty much our first arrivals on Wednesday, as far as I can remember, but that feels like a very long time ago. There goes a second prefect. the 48th fighter wing at Lakenheath, a pair of US Air Force F-35A Lightning IIs. It was in Riyadh 2022 that we saw for the first time a British-based US Air Force F-35 participating in the static display. They are back for a second consecutive year and I would say are likely to become very regular participants indeed. The 48th fighter wing at Lakenheath was the first outside the continental United States to receive a detachment, a permanent detachment of US Air Force F-35s. They have now fully replaced the F-15C at that base and serve alongside the F-15E Strike Eagle. Always a very noisy departure, the uh, F-35 being I would say probably the, uh, the noisiest single-engine fighter I've ever encountered.
wasn't expecting that. Well, that was uh, quite a departure, wasn't it? I wasn't quite ready for that abrupt pull at the end, and nor did I intend to zoom in quite so far. But uh, taxiing down the runway now, we have a P72 by the looks of things. Yes, we have a P72. This is a very interesting aircraft, a Riat debutant uh, in the hands of the Italian Air Force, part of their contribution to mark their 100th anniversary. It's a maritime patrol asset of which Italy operates four, and it has been participating in the static display. It's based on the ATR-72 airliner, but kitted out with, among other things, sea scanning radar and satellite communications. And behind it, you can see lining up the San Al Emirat, shortly to make their second departure of the day. The eight beautifully painted Ermaki MB339 NATs. I say eight, we saw seven of them in the display, of course, but uh, they have with them a spare aircraft. The number is significant because the seven jets in the display represent the fact that the United Arab Emirates is comprised of seven Emirates. We are turn, turn our attention back to the uh, P-72, which is now lined up on the runway. As I mentioned, part of a very, very impressive Italian Air Force contribution. Uh, still yet to depart from the Italian Air Force, the likes of the KC-130, the C-27J Spartan also. We'd hope to see that in the flying display. It had to be moved to static due to a minor technical problem, unfortunately. Indeed, I suppose it's possible that uh, that could prevent it from departing at all today. I'm unsure on the status of that. If it does depart, we'll get another look at its lovely special tail. So, as I said a moment ago, preparing to take off on our right, Al Fasan. Also a Beechcraft 
Texan T1 from the Royal Air Force, part of that impressive lineup I mentioned from the military flight training system. Quite rare that we see this aircraft at air shows, not least because it is not owned by the Royal Air Force, it is civilian operated, as is much of the MFTS fleet. So who will go first, the Texan or Al Fazan? Alpazan, a team that we have so much enjoyed over the last few days, especially yesterday with its full display. Limited to a flat show on the Saturday, unfortunately, by the cloud conditions at that time. But the full show is remarkable, not least because of the solo manoeuvres. Very Frecce Tricolori-esque, which should be no surprise given that this team was in part trained by the Frecce Tricolori and also notable because of the incredible smoke system that these aircraft boast. Hopefully, like the Saudi Hawks, we'll get a little burst of smoke as the team depart. as a, a final parting gift to us, but uh, we can but hope. And this is one of the teams for which we have acquired cockpit footage, which will be part of our souvenir programme released in a few months' time on watch.planestv.com. And I'd just like to remind you that we do have a discount code running at the moment. If you head to watch.planestv.com, the discount code is DEP23. Uh, that's DEP23. DEP referring to the fact that uh, this is Riyadh Departures. That will give you 20% off your first three months. We are hoping that within that window we will be able to release that Riyadh Souvenir program. Two hours of the very best action from this week's show, choosing the best weather conditions for each individual display because as anyone knows who was watching our live coverage or who was here in person, the conditions have been variable to say the least. But we've seen everything fly in good weather at some point. was only Al Fazan's second time in the UK, possibly the last time flying the MB339 because this aircraft, although it doesn't reach the end of its useful life until 2030, uh, the UAE Air Force is looking to replace it by around 2027 and potentially sooner. The most likely candidate being the L15 Falcon from China. the UAE has recently purchased a fleet of L-15s. They've ordered around 15 of them. It is widely assumed that order of jets is intended for Al-Fasan. It wouldn't be the first time that the UAE has purchased aircraft specifically for aerobatic duties because that is what happened with these MB-339s. This aircraft type has no other role within the UAE Air Force and never has done. It exists exclusively for the benefit of their national aerobatic team, Fasan al Emirat.
Now the Zan off into the distance and hopefully it will be uh, fewer than 11 years until we next see them in UK skies. They do fly uh, an, awful, an awful lot around the uh, world at the moment. Very busy they are. Already this year they have displayed in Malaysia. And they will shortly be heading to a show in Greece. Well, now the Slovak Air Force with a LET 410 Turbo LET. aircraft that has been here on static display and lining up uh, at the runway threshold just holding short of the runway we also have that uh, Emirati C-130H Hercules all three of the Middle Eastern teams supported by a C-130H this week the Jordanians and the Saudis also Ah, now here's a very interesting aircraft entering the runway. This is one of just two operated by the Italian Air Force at the moment. It is a Gulfstream G550, but modified into a conformal airborne early warning aircraft, known in Italian service as the E550A. And behind it, we have the two US Air Force F-16 CJs from Spangdalen. to be getting those two types in the same picture. At least because Italy is a former operator of the F-16. Also entering the runway from the left, we have an F-15 from Lakenheath, the 48th fighter wing, an F-15E. That should be one of two F-15Es that we see departing, one of them in a special commemorative Liberty Heritage Paint Scheme applied in July 2022. We saw it very early after having been unveiled at Riyadh last year on static display and entering the runway at the very far end. We have Kinetics Avro Regional Jet 70. It is a very busy period in coming because in addition to that, the Emirati C-130 is waiting to depart and we have the Saab Aeronautics Saab 2000 support aircraft now holding short of the runway. give you a quick, a quick glance at the uh, RJ70 from Kinetic, which is currently backtracking. And we've also got at the moment uh, a glimpse of the uh, Liberty paint scheme that I mentioned on one of the F-15Es.
it's stylized to look akin to a, a P-47 operated during the Second World War. And as I mentioned, unveiled in July of last year. But uh, probably time to turn our attention back to the E-550 as the runway is clear and that will very shortly take off. This is an aircraft type which, although Italy only operates two of, they have recently elected to purchase several more of them, a couple more fitted out for airborne early warning uses uh, and then others with no specific mission equipment. They can be used perhaps for VIP transport or fitted out at a later date as the need arises. Italy is not the only operator of the G550 in modified airborne early warning form. Israel themselves operated, of course. Singapore, another prominent operator of the type and one of its early adopters. In Italy's case, it came about because of an aircraft swap. These G550s having been obtained in exchange for M346 Masters. Israel, one of a number of export customers for them. Singapore again being another. In fact, yes, a nice, nice little triad that I'd never noticed there before. Singapore, Israel and Italy, all operators both of this version of the G550 and of the M346. C-130, possibly one of the next to take off. It's not moving at the moment, which might suggest there's something on approach. This is one of eight relatively old C-130s operated by the United Arab Emirates Air Force Air Transport Wing. They also have a fleet of 10 C-17s and we're expecting that we might see one of those today as well, again supporting Al Fazan. Look at the uh, RJ70 there, all part of the same family as the uh, BA146 and uh, anyone who's been subscribed to Planes TV's YouTube channel for a while will remember and some time ago we covered the very last flight of uh, one of the Royal Air Force BA146s on its arrival into the, the museum at Duxford. It's now on display as part of the airliner collection there. And here we have the Rolls-Royce Heritage Flight Spitfire PR-19.
It's an aircraft that appeared on static display at Riyadh 2023. See just uh, on the uh, front left-hand edge of that RAF roundel, low visibility roundel, to accommodate its photo reconnaissance role, you can see one of the camera lens windows. by a Rolls-Royce Griffin and I will stop talking and let you enjoy the sound of the Griffin when the aircraft rolls, uh, revs up for takeoff. by the that Spitfire has uh, an interesting history. It was one of the founding members of the Battle of Britain Memorial Flight, or the historic aircraft flight as it was then known. Now operated in civilian hands, as I mentioned, by the Rolls-Royce Heritage Flight and based at East Midlands alongside P-51D Mustang Warhorse, which the Rolls-Royce Heritage Flight don't own, but they do operate on the airshow circuit during the summer. Rolls-Royce Heritage Flight Mustang is uh, also attending the air tattoo on static display, if I remember correctly. I'm not confident whether that was the Mustang we saw departing way back at the start of the stream, one of the first fixed-wing departures we saw today, or if that was the other one, because we also had P-51D Mustang Francis Dell from Germany. Uh, I assumed at the time that uh, the Mustang we saw departing earlier was Francis Dell, although actually it occurs to me now I don't know that. Uh, it could have been either. Another aircraft that's currently lining up, and this uh, has appeared on static display but also acted as a support aircraft, we have a Piaggio P180 Avanti from 311 Gruppo, the Rapato Sperimentale Volo. That is the same unit that has provided the uh, F2000A and uh, T346A master solo display. But we'll, uh, we'll show you that Avanti in a moment because the C-130 is now rolling. Just give you a quick look at that Avanti that I was mentioning earlier with its very distinctive pusher configuration and canard wing. Behind it, the French CN235 that we saw arriving earlier. And 
and uh, we'll just pan round and see the uh, Belgian A400M is now running its engines in preparation for its departure. And having taken to the runway, our next aircraft from the RAF MFTS, a pair of Hawk T2s. Stand corrected, a single Hawk T2. This aircraft, part of number four flight training school based at Aria Valley. Along with the uh, pair of Texans that we saw depart a few minutes ago, actually. Both part of four FTS. So perhaps we can get a camera if this uh, Hawk is going to sit there for a moment to our far left hand side because I've just spotted uh, what I think is the Jordanian Hercules complete with special tail. Yes indeed, you might just be able to make out the uh, words Wadi Rum on the tail there. On the other side of the tail it advertises the city of Aqaba. This aircraft, part of number three squadron, Royal Jordanian Air Force, and here to support the Royal Jordanian Falcons in their attendance at Riyadh. But rolling now, we have the Hawk T2 and four FTS. So centre screen now we have the Saab 2000 here in support of the uh, Saab contribution to the show. Uh, we saw the Gripen E's taking off earlier and I talked a little bit about them but there is another Saab aircraft here. That is the Saab Global Eye. We'll be seeing that heading off later today. Uh, it's a Riat debutant based on the Bombardier Global 6000 business jet. Airborne early warning control aircraft. Very distinctive uh, radar, longitudinally. Suspended above the fuselage. And again, we'll talk a little bit more about that aircraft when it does appear in front of us. But uh, as I said, a Riat debutant in the static display.
but it's worth saying if you've just joined us and uh, you're not uh, entirely sure of what's going on here, what is Riyadh Departures, it's been a while since I've explained. Uh, this is the day after the end of the Royal International Air Tattoo, which is the world's largest military air show. We have somewhere in the region of 200 to 250 aircraft from 30 nations that all need dispersing back to their home countries and this day is pretty much entirely dedicated to that. The bulk of the departures take place between about 9 o'clock in the morning and 2 o'clock in the afternoon. So we're a good way through them, but there's quite a lot of interesting aircraft yet to leave us. We've got lined up now F-16s and F-15s from the US Air Forces in Europe waiting to take to the runway. At some point today, coming up, uh, well, scheduled for 2 o'clock. What's the time now? Oh, tw tw 26 past 2. Um, 26 minutes ago, we were supposed to see the departure of Flugmuseum Messerschmitt's ME262. Well, fingers crossed that all is well there and we will still see it later on. And just glancing around me at some of the aircraft we're still waiting to see in the static display. Um, I can see there's a US Air Force C-17 which is currently being pushed around, presumably being moved into a position from which it can easily depart. We've got a Saudi uh, Airbus A330 multi-role tanker transport. Uh, the Saab Global Eye has its beacon flashing. There's a pair of KC-135s, one for the United States Air Force uh, at Milton Hall and another from uh, Metria, the civilian tanker contracting organisation based in the United States. That is an ex-Republic of Singapore Air Force example, although it has been upgraded since retirement. Also waiting at the far left-hand end of the runway, we have the, uh, the uh, Jordanian C-130H Hercules. But it looks like our next movement is going to be the departure of the two F-16 CJs from Spangdalem, operated by the United States Air Forces in Europe. As they now enter the runway. Not the first time we've seen Spangdalem-based F-16s here at Riyadh. We saw Aviano-based US Air Force F-16s at Riyadh 2022. But at the show before that, in 2019, we had a Spangdalem-based F-16 in the flying display, flown by uh, the US Air Force Viper demo team. The ME262 has been spotted. We have seen it on the move. It is taxiing to the runway and very soon to depart. But first, here come the F-16s. Well, that's an interesting lineup. The ME262 on the runway with uh, a King Air behind it, or I suspect possibly a Royal Navy Shadow. Might even be in front. Yes, it looks like, uh, look, ah, it's a King Air support aircraft, I'm told in my ear. And that is the first to take off. The 262 heading off next. This is, incidentally, the first time we've had an ME-262 in British airspace since 1945. So quite an achievement for the air tattoo organisers. The aircraft comes to us from Flugmuseum Messerschmitt. It is a replica built in the United States in the 1990s and fitted with modern engines because uh, none of the originals survive. Not in flyable form, anyway.
quite a treat to see that aircraft in the flying display. And also performing a spectacular arrival prior to the show, arriving in formation with the Rolls-Royce Heritage Flight's P-51D Mustang and Spitfire PR-19. But now here come the F-15s from Lakenheath. Well, the US Air Force always likes to give us a bit of a show uh, on departure here. They've contributed strongly to the show this year with uh, some of the aircraft we've already seen uh, departing from the static display. But in the flying display, we've got to mention they had uh, B-51, uh, B-52 as uh, the highlight of their contribution. They also had a B-52 on static, so we'll hopefully be seeing both of those aircraft depart later today. So RJ-70 from Kinetic lined up now, the Belgian A400M is also taxiing to the threshold. goes the uh, Italian Air Force C-27J Spartan, an aircraft we'd hoped to see in the flying display. One of the uh, three especially painted aircraft from 311 Gruppo with the special tails, the three flying display aircraft, the Italian Air Force official solo displays this year. Unfortunately, a minor technical problem meant it was relegated to the static display, which was a shame for two reasons. Firstly, because it deprived us of the chance to see C-27 in the air. It is a, a, a masterful, multi-award winning display. It was a double award winner on its REACT debut in 2011. Its show being fully aerobatic, complete with wing overs, rolls and derry turns. But it's also a shame because it deprived us of the opportunity to see a second C-27, which was supposed to accompany it in the static display, and that was intended to be a YEC-27 Jedi, an airborne early warning and control aircraft. It would have been 
the Riat debut of a Jedi had that aircraft made it here. Externally very similar to a standard Spartan because the equipment is palletized in the main and can be installed in the cargo bay, but there are some extra antennae on the bottom and for those of us who like to sort of tick boxes and say I've seen one of these, it would have been lovely. But nonetheless, we'll uh, come back to the Spartan later when it departs. Here goes the Belgian A400M that we saw arriving earlier this morning in support of their F-16 solo display. The 400M nowadays the mainstay of the European transport fleet operated by uh, many of the largest air forces here as their primary transport aircraft. France's Armée de l'Air, Germany's Luftwaffe, of course the United Kingdom, Belgium, Luxembourg, Spain as well. bit of heat haze making it difficult to focus on these aircraft at the moment. It's become relatively warm but also pretty windy. I hope it's not uh, too obvious on the footage that you're watching. have one camera down on ground level which I'm assured is lovely and steady but I'm up here on the roof of our broadcasting trailer and, uh, being bounced around a little bit for one of the show days we did move our main camera down to ground level just to get out of the wind but for departures I think it's worth being a little higher it gives us a good view of the uh, runway threshold especially the right hand end which we wouldn't get from ground level well, based if you're familiar with the uh, Riat showground layout, just right of the Friat grandstand and uh, left of the hospitality enclosures, near enough show centre on a slight rise, so we do look down towards especially the right hand end. Fairly close to show centre and roughly central on the runway. the Twin Otter Guardian, displayed by de Havilland Canada, demonstrating its very short takeoff abilities there in just a few fuselage lengths by the look of it and then staying excitingly low. Anyone who saw its arrival couldn't help but be impressed. It just came to a stop on a sixpence and actually touched its tail skid on the ground as well. Very dramatic indeed. lovely cloud conditions here now we often talk about this but it is important for filming purposes it's uh, hopefully giving a nice portrayal of speed and altitude in this footage which you wouldn't get if it was a plain blue or plain gray sky lovely clear air as well I suppose that's one advantage of the rain that has been lashing us at times over the last few days it has given us gloriously clear air for departures. Now I notice the Avanti is not yet moving. Now often 
what this has meant. So far, when nothing has taken to the runway, is that uh, there is something going to land. Ah, but in this case, it's the Westland Wasp. There is a Westland Wasp departing ahead of the Avanti. That would explain things. So we've had both the uh, Wasp and Scout here in the static display, and there's been some debate over which is which. Uh, this is a Wasp, you can tell, because it has free castering undercarriage. That is to make it easier to uh, move about on a pitching, rolling deck of a, a frigate or carrier. Uh, the Scout is the army version, and that has skids rather than wheels. Out to our left, the Jordanian C-130 has taken to the runway and is backtracking. Now let's get you a shot of that. We will get to enjoy its uh, lovely special tail scheme soon. Wasp about to overfly the Hercules. Hopefully at a low enough height that we can catch them both in the same frame for you. 400 feet, he's missing. operated by Navy Wings, that uh, charity bringing together a number of operators of historic aircraft. They also operate several of their own. This is one that is, uh, I believe, owned by them directly. Here is the Hercules complete with special tail. In a crucial context, the Royal Jordanian Falcons are based in the city of Akabar, and uh, the other side of the tail advertises that. You can see the Royal Jordanian Falcons on the tail there, though, uh, reading Wadi Rum, Jordan. Now, Wadi Rum is an area of outstanding beauty, uh, desert with rock formations just outside the city of Akabar. It's been used as a filming location on many occasions when uh, alien or Martian landscapes are required. one of Jordan's top tourist attractions, and as I've mentioned already, the Royal Jordanian Falcons' participation in Riyadh and indeed their European tour more generally is intended to promote Jordanian tourism as well as promoting Jordanian goodwill towards their allies and partners here in Europe. But all eyes on the Mustang now, the second aircraft from the Rolls-Royce Heritage flight. We saw their Spitfire PR-17, PR-19, sorry, earlier on. And now we get the sound of a Merlin. It was a Griffin in the Spitfire. And these aircraft display consecutively. That's a really nice demonstration of the uh, oral difference between the two engine notes. So back to the C-130 and uh, 
Jordan is a country with a very long association with the air tattoo and with air shows in general. I mentioned earlier the King Hussein Memorial Sword. Well, that is named after King Hussein of Jordan, the late King Hussein. It was at his behest that the Royal Jordanian Falcons were founded and he was a very regular visitor here at the air tattoo. And now we have the Avanti, as I mentioned, from 311 Gruppo. This is the only aircraft type that they actually operate on a permanent basis. The Eurofighters and C-27s and so on uh, are actually swapped into the squadron. They're loaned from uh, frontline operational units. And that is because the amount of uh, airframe fatigue that they encounter uh, with the RSV is so great that they feel the need to swap aircraft in and out to even out that uh, airframe fatigue across the entire fleet. The P-180s are used for transport and liaison rather than for flight testing. They don't encounter nearly such uh, high amounts of stress. So several of them are allocated to 311 Gruppo on a permanent basis. It's not uncommon to swap aircraft in and out of squadrons based on uh, one particular unit having unusually high airframe fatigue and uh, actually it reminds me of the uh, Royal Australian Air Force aerobatic team, the Royalettes, when they used the PC-9. They swapped in regular uh, operational PC-9s from the training fleet and uh, they were fitted with uh, smoke systems but uh, a standard paint scheme just a, a, a decal of the Rolex logo which was applied to the tail. They do now have their own de dedicated fleet of PC-21s that have been purchased specifically for them. The PC-9 has been retired from Australian service. Well, I've got good news stroke bad news from down at the trailer, depending on uh, how you look at this sort of thing. Um, and that is that I'm going to be up here on my own for a little while longer. Ian is occupied with work downstairs, so it's going to be me trying to talk you through this solo. Whether that's good or bad, I'll let you be the judges of that. Um, but there is something that's very definitely good, which is that uh, Ian is working on a uh, highlights compilation the very best of the action from React 2023 and our intention is to show you that as the finale of this live broadcast. I'm looking forward to watching that myself. I uh, only see a lot of this footage through my uh, tiny little LCD monitor so there have been uh, many times where I thought oh I bet that's pretty epic but I need to go back and watch it when I get home and find out. So uh, but maybe I'll pop down into the trailer at some point and watch that uh, highlights video when uh, Ian's playing it all out. So the C-27 now lined up. A great disappointment not to be seeing this aircraft in the flying display. The uh, display commentator, Mike Palumbo, uh, from the Rapato Sperimentale Volo did ex uh, invite us to go and express our displeasure by visiting the aircraft and throwing rotten fruit at it, but I don't think anyone took him up on that invitation. It is a tremendous display if you uh, have never had the chance to see it. Uh, do look it up, or better still, head over to watch.planestv.com and watch our a souvenir programme from Riyadh last year, released last Friday, two hours of action from the show, and that included the C-27 display, complete with, I think I'm right in saying, one aileron roll and three, possibly four, derry turns. It's quite a spectacle.
Let's see if he gives us a gutsy departure, a bit of a consolation prize, perhaps. Well, that was the uh, last glance we'll get of the special tail that has been applied to the three Rapazza Sperimentale Volo display aircraft, marking the 100th anniversary of the Italian Air Force, which was one of the two main themes here. The other, Sky Tanker, as I've mentioned, marking 100 years since the first successful aerial refueling. But now, if we look to the right-hand end of the runway, we can see... Uh, a very distinctive yellow aeroplane standing out brilliantly well in the sunlight. Not quite lined up yet and I'm uh, racking my brains because I did know about 30 seconds ago what this was called and I was getting ready to introduce it but the name completely blanked me. Uh, Stinson Reliant, of course it's a Stinson Reliant, again from Navy Wings. I think in this case a Navy Wings affiliate aircraft rather than one uh, directly owned and operated by the charity. But I would happily be corrected on that if uh, anyone happens to know down uh, in the trailer below. And we have the Saab Global Eye lining up as well. New version of the Global Eye offers 70% uh, greater coverage than the previous version according to Saab. The first customer for the Global Eye has been the United Arab Emirates. They've ordered five aircraft with three delivered to date. The Swedish Air Force has also ordered the type. They've ordered a pair of aircraft with the option to order two more. But here goes the Stinson Reliant. I imagine this uh, will be in the air long before it reaches us. Interesting to note on the Global Eye, some of the various uh, aerodynamic modifications that have been made to accommodate for the air disturbance from the various radar and sensor attachments, most notably the fences that have been installed on the horizontal stabiliser. I've just heard, by the way, B-52s leaving on Wednesday. Uh, so, according to, uh, to you guys in the chat. So, uh, I did say earlier we were hoping to see those today. Apparently, that won't be the case.
got a PC12 lining up now, another example of the PC12, having already seen one uh, provided by Pilatus directly. This one coming from the Finnish Air Force, I think, based on the colour scheme. And that here is a support aircraft for their absolutely outstanding FA-18C Hornet solo display. We've already seen the Hornet departing earlier today. We were talking earlier about highlights of REAP 2023. Well, the Finnish Hornet does have to be one of them. The pitch authority of that aircraft is absolutely exceptional. The display is relentlessly high G. But it's the speed of the G onset, the turns, the instantaneous pitch rate. That is what is so impressive about the Finnish F-18. Down at the uh, left-hand end of the airfield, we have a C-130, a Canadian CC-130J-30 to be precise, the stretched version of the C-130J. Canada has been a C-130 operator since the 1960s, but this is the very latest version in their inventory. It was supposed to be here along with the CP-140 Aurora, but uh, sadly, as far as I know, the uh, Aurora did not make it. That's the uh, Canadian development of the uh, P3 Orion. Having said that, it is entirely possible that some aircraft have arrived without me noticing. Um, I was uh, completely surprised to discover that the Italian AMXs have turned up. I just happened not to be on camera at the uh, time that they arrived. I must have been down eating a sandwich or something, and uh, as far as I knew, uh, they'd been cancelled. and became aware that AMXs had made it to react this morning when I saw them on the list of departures. This is a very long day and I apologise for mentioning this on multiple occasions but for those of you who are coming and going and uh, perhaps leaving us during some of these periods of inactivity I should uh, just remind you all that we are producing an edited programme of REACT 2023. It's all the same content but only the best bits, only the best of the weather. And obviously cutting out all of these uh, periods of inactivity also attempting to showcase the entire show, flying displays and also highlights of the arrivals and departures in around about two, two and a half hours. That will be published on our aviation streaming service, watch.planestv.com. We have a discount code ongoing at the moment. I'll tell you what the code is just after we've watched the uh, finished PC-12 depart. So the discount code I just mentioned is DEP23, as in Departures 2023. I'll say again, DEP23. It gives you 20% off your first three-month subscription to watch.planestv.com. Brings the price down to £8 a month, usually it's 10 And the offer code is just available for today. We will be cancelling that offer code tonight. So if you do want to avail yourself of that substantial discount, then now is the time to do so. Well, we have some good news because the Danabrog Special Scheme F-16 of the Danish Air Force has seemingly been fixed. And is now lining up uh, at the whole short point. We'll be seeing that departing shortly, having not seen it particularly often in the flying display. It was not able to fly on either Saturday or Sunday, but we did catch its uh, 
rehearsal and its display on Friday in quite poor weather conditions. Well, here we have the Antonov An-26 of the Romanian Air Force. This aircraft, an undisputed star of the static display here, it's the only An-26 which Romania still operates, part of a fleet inherited from the Soviet Union, and it will very soon be replaced by the C-27J Spartan. lovely departure from the AN-26. We saw Romania contribute an AN-30 to the static display at last year's show, which was similarly welcome. And then in 2019, we had their now retired MiG-21 Lancer performing in the flying display. What an occasion that was. That being an aircraft that was retired, ooh, about nine months ago. Possibly even less, it might have even been uh, this year. Not one we'll be seeing uh, at aircraft, uh, at air shows again, uh, apart from possibly in Croatian hands. I think they have a, a few months left in Croatia and, and they are the last operator in Europe. Chipmunk T10 on the runway, and then following that we have the uh, two Danish F-16s, one F-16A and one F-16B, or rather I should say F-16AM and BM, because these are upgraded aircraft that went through a substantial midlife upgrade in the early 1990s. Denmark, along with Belgium, the Netherlands and Norway, were among the original four European partner nations of the F-16 programme. So whose Hercules do we have off to our left? Ah yes, the Canadian example. Well this presumably next to the park, backtracking, turning around in front of the chipmunk or perhaps going onto the northern taxiway. A lot of the Hercules uh, that we've seen here haven't used that northern taxiway. It does look like our Canadian example is doing just that. So that will clear the runway for the departing chipmunk. Hercules, I think I'm right in saying, uh, coming to us from Trenton, Canadian Forces base. But that is based purely on the fact that, uh, that the uh, name Trenton seems somewhat familiar at this specific moment in time. Um, busy wielding cameras around and I can't quite get to the, the package of notes I made hidden in my pocket at the moment. Well, here goes the chipmunk. 
and we'll see those Danish F-16s. As I was saying, the uh, Danish F-16s have been through a midlife upgrade in the 90s, which brought them roughly in line with uh, F-16C standard. Even though these are much older airframes, uh, anything up to about 40 years old in some cases, a lot of the uh, European partner nations F-16s were manufactured under license here in Europe. And in most cases, they are on the cusp of being retired. Denmark's F-16s will go out of service in around 2025. That is earlier than was originally planned in order to free up the airframes for potential use by the armed forces of Ukraine at the earliest possible opportunity. So this will be one of the last opportunities to see, or rather this has been one of the last opportunities to see a Danish F-16 at a British air show. There is a, uh, an award here for the best paint scheme at the show. We've had some fantastic ones. We had the Jordanian C-130, we had that German Eurofighter that we saw departing earlier on, the yellow Italian AMX, but for my money, um, the best of the bunch is this, the Danabrog, a huge Danish flag marking 800 years of the uh, Danabrog, the Danish flag. It's the oldest national flag in the world applied a few years back but uh, maintained as the Danish Air Force's F-16 display jet. Even though the anniversary has passed. Be interested to know what the uh, Flying Control Committee picked out as their favourite special scheme. It was Dream Viper that won it last year. So in fact, three F-16s from Denmark, that F-16AM in the lead and two F-16BMs. I forgot we saw an F-16BM landing here earlier today. In addition to the uh, display jet and the spare that we've already seen. I mentioned a moment ago the special scheme on the uh, Italian AMX. Well, that AMX, after spending a very long time holding short of the runway, is finally at the front of the queue.
Well, we just had the departure of the uh, Saudi Hawks primary support aircraft, C-130H Hercules. Now something a little special from the Italian Air Force. This has been the last British air show appearance of an Italian AMX A11 Ghibli. And as number two, we have that glorious special scheme aeroplane in its squadron anniversary colours. So the uh, AMX being retired from Hungarian service, from, uh, sorry, from Italian service next year. I'm getting confused because there's a Hungarian aircraft on the radio, you see, so I'm just hearing Hungary in my headset several times. Um, yeah, leaving Italian service next year. Only a little over 20 of them left. And uh, although conceived as a ground attack aircraft, they're now used exclusively in the tactical reconnaissance role in the eve of their service careers. So a great shame not to be seeing that very charismatic aircraft again. It's been a long time since we've seen one uh, in a Riyadh flying display, probably uh, almost 10 years ago in fact. But nice to have one on static, not just this year, but last year as well and that special scheme as well. Last year we had a special tail from the AMX, so we have got uh, pretty lucky, I would say. And at the end of the runway now, we have uh, a Falcon 20 from Draken Europe, formerly Cobham. One of the aircraft that is used for, uh, well, various taskings, in fact, but perhaps most notably used to simulate intruder aircraft and exercise the quick reaction alert forces based at Coningsby and Lossiemouth. These Falcons play the part of uh, an unknown aircraft and the Typhoons are tasked to go and intercept it, identify it and then take appropriate measures, whatever they may be on that particular sortie. We did see aircraft like this one, possibly in fact this very airframe as part of a, a display team here at Riyadh in the late 2000s in formation with a, a foreship of Hawks. That, is, this, that display was a fascinating one because it effectively utilised uh, Falcon 20 as a mothership and the four Hawks played the part of uh, missiles that were fired from it and uh, demonstrated the uh, whole flight profile of uh, various types of missions, uh, including the uh, air-launched missile element of those missions. see uh, there's at least three aircraft waiting to go at the moment in addition to this uh, Bombardier business jet we've got the Royal Canadian Air Force CC-130J-30 uh, we've also got the Cessna Sky Courier one of their latest products uh, developed as a, a feeder airliner and light freight aircraft funded I believe by a particularly large pre-order from FedEx and developed at their request We'll be seeing the Sky Courier fairly shortly, along with that Canadian C-130. Glancing around me, I did think I saw that uh, US Air Force C-17 Globemaster being positioned for start, although it actually seems to have now been pushed back into its parking bay. But 
such is the nature of Departures Day here at Riyadh. They like to keep us guessing, it never goes according to the uh, briefed schedule. It is the Canadian CC-130 next to take to the runway. They currently have uh, 12 E-models, including four tankers and eight search and rescue optimised aircraft, plus 17 of these CC-130J-30s. They have a 15-foot longer fuselage than the standard C-130J. So it has the capacity to carry 92 fully equipped paratroopers or 128 seated passengers. Let's dive into my notes and check if I was right about uh, the base. Yes, indeed, RCAF Trenton, uh, 436th Transport Squadron. I thought the, the name Trent, uh, Trenton sounded appropriate. It's now the uh, Cessna Sky Courier lining up. We also have uh, Hungarian Air Force Falcon waiting to enter the runway. And another small jet which I can't make out very clearly, but I'm going to take a punt and guess that it's probably a Royal Air Force Phenom. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm pleased to announce that a major milestone has just been reached. For the first time at React 2023, I have removed my coat. It's not that it's been cold, it's just that for so much of the time it's been raining.
here goes the uh, Royal Air Force uh, Phenom T1, another aircraft from the military flight training system, the replacement for the King Air. Based on the Phenom 300 business jet from Embraer. One of the relatively new generation of very light business jets. Similar performance actually to the uh, very fast turboprops that I was mentioning earlier, the uh, TBM that I described and the PC-12. In fact, the uh, PC-12 actually has uh, bigger capacity than the Phenom. It's almost comparable in terms of cruising speed as well. Certainly the uh, TBM and the Phenom, which both have the same uh, capacity and comparable cabin dimensions, Probably only about 50 knots apart in cruise speed. <coughs> the Phenom used by the Royal Air Force for uh, multi-engine training. So, uh, for example, uh, shutting down one aircraft in flight to deal with asymmetrical thrust. That will be a typical training exercise. We also see uh, lifting off one of the two helicopters from MFTS that is provided for the static display here. They've provided both a Juno and a Jupiter which provide rotary wing training. The Juno stroke Jupiter hover taxiing out to the runway. I couldn't possibly tell you the difference between, uh, from, from, from this sort of range. Juno, I'm told in my headset. Is that, is that definite? How do I tell the difference? It's not definite. If anyone in the chat knows how to spot the difference at this range between a Juno and a Jupiter, please do let us know and someone will hopefully feed that back to me in my ears. It'll be a bit too late for me to tell you what this is while it's still on screen, unfortunately. I suspect we've probably got uh, one example of each. Well, two examples of one of them. If we were all slightly less busy, I could have told you whether those were Junos or Jupiters and probably told you a lot more about them as well in, you know, with a bit more authority, but 
in case it's not obvious, we're all doing several jobs here. I'm uh, primarily here to, to document the aircraft as a camera operator. Um, and the, the, the talking that I'm, I'm trying to do is very much in addition to that as a secondary role. So I hope it's adding something and hoping you enjoy the, uh, the action and giving you a bit of situational awareness and context. certainly not a full polished air show commentary and when it comes to our official souvenir program from the show then it will be Ben Donnell and Mark Manwaring talking you through the action they are the official commentary team here and they do an absolutely fantastic job between them The Hungarian Air Force Falcon 700 has just been cleared for takeoff. That is here in a supporting role. Hungarians have had a Gripen on static display. Seeing onto the runway now, we have uh, Royal Navy Avenger, their specialised version of the King Air. And I'm afraid, having triumphantly announced not that long ago that uh, for the first time this week my coat has come off, I'm thinking very strongly about putting it back on again. It's pretty blowy up here. Otherwise, very nice conditions though, great sky. Perfect, nice puffy white clouds, high enough they don't cause us any problems. But enough of them to create some nice cloud definition. being read lots of um, lots of nice comments from, from the chat after I made that comment about doing too much at once. Well thank you everyone, I'm glad you are enjoying it and uh, at some point soon I'm sure uh, Ian will probably come and join me. He's downstairs at the moment working on our uh, Riyadh 2023 highlights compilation which we are very much hoping we will have ready for you for the end of this stream And that will serve as a, a, a nice trailer for the full edited programme that I've mentioned a few times now. I apologise, it's not a Royal Navy Avenger T1, it's just a, a, a standard King Air. Oh no, it is. Well, well, there we go, an astonishing failure at both camera work and commentary at the same time. It was, a, I should have stuck to my guns, it was an Avenger and I should have concentrated on filming it rather than correcting and then re-correcting myself. Sorry about that.
for the first time in a very long time, I can't actually see a single aircraft at the moment, although I know there is still activity ongoing because the US Air Force KC-135 has left its parking space. I'm also reminded, just seeing a tail poking up in the distance, that there's another aircraft here. Let me just swing the camera around and I can show you a tail, a very appropriate tail given the week we've just had. That is the tail of a WC-130 Weatherbird, the Hurricane Hunters as they're popularly known. We've got that departure to look forward to still as far as I know and if I pan out there's lots of um, paraphernalia and lorries in the way, but we've got the Metria KC-135 still to go. We've got the Saudi A330 multi-ball tanker transport conveniently hidden behind one of our cameras, but I can see it with the naked eye. And that is the tail of the US Air Force C-17 Globemaster. You know, there's still, there's still plenty of heavies yet to go. The uh, Italian KC-767A there as well. Somewhere there's an Italian KC-130 also. I'm taxiing onto the runway now. Well, let's zoom in and see what that is. Ah, it's not taxiing onto the runway at all. That is um, a T-346A Master of the Italian Air Force, which looks like it, well, it might have had some problems or it might simply be moved to, a, to another parking space in the absence of its pilot. Clearly not going to be flying anywhere anytime soon because all of the remove before flight panels and labels are still firmly attached. There does seem to be some kind of runway inspection going along, uh, going on multiple vehicles on the runway in the last few minutes. Also being towed not under its own steam, we have a Polish Air Force C-295M. Look, if you haven't quite grasped the, uh, the vibe for react departures, then I'm sure it will be becoming clear to you now. There are moments just like arrivals of intense activity, uh, and then there are also gaps where very little happens for 10, 15 minutes, sometimes even longer. But there's still, you know, looking around, plenty of aircraft in the static display yet to depart. I'm intrigued by what has happened to the US Air Force KC-135, which was quite visible from here, parked alongside the Metria example at one point, and it has very definitely gone, and I would have expected to be able to see at least part of it. But anyway, while we're here, um, it's probably a good moment in this uh, short, quiet patch to talk a little bit about the discount code, just for those of you who have joined us recently. Ah, we have some movement. We have a pair of Portuguese TB30 Epsilons, but not heading to the runway, rather heading over to the north side of the airport, the northeast ramp where a lot of the flying display assets have been parked. These particular aircraft have been on static display. It 
these uh, TB30s. We were quite pleased to see last year as part of the training theme. It was their first participation in an air tattoo for quite some time. And Portugal is the last operator of the type, at least in Europe, as far as I know. Uh, so great to see them back for a second successive year. Flashing lights on the French CN235 as well, so that would suggest an imminent departure. In fact, it appears one of the engines has already started. So, as I said, still plenty of activity to come. So, discount code. I was about to talk about the discount code. Today, and for today only, we are running a discount for our streaming service, watch.planestv.com. 20% off your first three months. Why are we doing this? Well, it's because we are hoping within that three-month window we will have completed and released our REAT 2023 edited programme, two to two and a half hours of the very best of the action of the last six days. We really do have our, our pick of all of the very best material. We have seen all of the flying display participants perform at some point in good weather. We've also been filming all of the arrivals and departures, as you know. Plus, we've been collecting cockpit footage from many of the participating aircraft, including three of the jet aerobatic teams, Patria Aguila, uh, Al Vazan and the Saudi Hawks, plus the Spanish Harriers and probably several others as well that I haven't been told about yet. So um, all of that is going to be combined into this programme, uh, which we'll be releasing exclusively on watch.planestv.com. If you subscribe today, you can avail yourself of that discount. You can also immediately watch all of the React contents that we've already produced, uh, which is uh, something in the region of 20 hours of live broadcasting that you can find on there from the Friday, Saturday and Sunday shows, probably more than 20 hours, more like 25 hours in fact. Um, in addition to that, we've got a 34-year archive of airshow programmes going all the way back to 1989. Everything that uh, Planes TV has produced for the last 10 to 15 years is certainly on there and there's quite a bit of older stuff there as well so um, if it's a, a damp winter's evening and you, you fancy watching a bit of Mildenhall action from the 90s and seeing a whole load of aircraft types that we don't have at air shows anymore then you can do just that. Plus it gives you access to some of our upcoming live broadcasts including most notably the Duxford Battle of Britain air show in September. I can't give you a very good ro a view of this, I'm afraid, but if I sort of point behind us, you can movement from the Metria KC-135. This particular aircraft served initially with the United States Air Force and then the Republic of Singapore Air Force from 2000 until 2019. At that point it was retired uh, from Singaporean service and replaced with the A330 multi-role tanker transport. Four of those ex-Singaporean aircraft have now been taken on by Metria, an American civilian organisation offering aerial refuelling services to militaries around the world. Earlier this year, Metria completed the first ever boom refuelling by a civilian aircraft, and in that case, they were topping up the tanks of a US Navy P-8 Poseidon. I've seen quite a bit of uh, KC-135 action at this show because so we've had a US Air Force example on static display, a US Air Force example performing a fly past yesterday. We had the French C-135FR which is uh, also a strato tanker derivative. That performed a very impressive fly past on the Friday show. Well, performed a full display, in fact three fly pasts. Uh, but the last of those passes were absolutely exceptional. A low overshoot, landing gear out, cleans the landing gear up at very low level and then went into a wing rock. That's a...
The uh, KC-135 was developed from a shortened version of the Boeing 707. It's one of the most prolific aerial refueling platforms globally. 803 have been produced between 1955 and 1965. Almost all of the remaining examples have been upgraded to approximately KC-135R standard. The main difference being newer, higher bypass engines, the CFM-56 to be specific, which has improved efficiency by 25% and improved range by 60%. Got a little bit of movement over on the far side with the French CN235 heading out to the runway. I mentioned before this uh, aircraft being a joint European Indonesian project. It did serve with a few commercial airliners. Merpati of Indonesia springs to mind. Never served with any European airlines, as far as I'm aware. We are building up some material with which we can help fill some of these gaps to keep you all entertained. I can hear discussions going on in my ear. We've got a trailer for one of our previous REAP programmes as well as the one that Ian is currently working on, uh, which will give you a bit of a flavour if you're not familiar with Planes TV about some of the edited content uh, that we produce. It's not just these live streams. Speaking of live streams, I've talked about watch.planestv.com, but I haven't really mentioned what happens on our YouTube channel for a few hours now. Um, if for whatever reason you're not able to subscribe to our streaming service, then do make sure you are subscribed to us on YouTube because we do as much of our live streams as possible here for free. And that will include in ooh, a little under two weeks' time the old Buckingham Air Show up in Norfolk, which is always a fun event. It's got the Red Arrows and the RAF Typhoon this year, as well as quite a a handful of warbirds as well. A lot of the Duxford flying days go out here for free, including uh, August's Duxford flying evening, which is always a fun event. Potentially some other shows coming up later this year as well, which I don't think uh, have been mentioned yet. So I'm, I'm not going to say anything about those, just in case the details aren't 100% nailed down. Entering the runway from the right-hand side, we have a Royal Air Force Atlas C-1. The replacement for the Hercules in RAF service. Although, as I've mentioned already, some 50% larger in terms of payload, with a substantially larger range as well.
So that aircraft will be off on a very short flight off to uh, RAF Bryce Norton, which is where it is based, about 10 miles down the road from here. We see quite a lot of Bryce traffic in the distance, actually, um, while recording the arrivals and departures. we really wanted to, we could probably follow this aircraft all the way back to Bryce. Keeping the camera on it until it disappears below the tree line on final approach. It's that close. French CN235 now lined up on the runway. It's been here supporting the Rafale solo display. Now that was uh, quite a memorable performance. It's one of the shortest fast jet solo displays on the European circuit, but they cram so much into that roughly eight and a half, nine minutes. More maneuvers than, uh, than most other teams would fit into 10, 12, 13, 14 minutes. Very, uh, very compact flowing performance. And that's despite the fact that uh, the aircraft, for display purposes, was previously permitted to fly at uh, up to 11G. It's now been reduced to 9G, the same as a standard operational Rafale. But you wouldn't know from watching it. several extraordinary things about the uh, Rafale solar display. One of them is the choreography of the routine itself, but the others are more related to the outstanding maneuverability of the Rafale as an aircraft. It has a roll rate of 270 degrees per second. That is the limit that Dasso have imposed. It's not necessarily always going to roll that quickly, but uh, that's the fastest roll limit of any Western fourth or fifth generation aircraft. It certainly seems that uh, it's getting pretty close to that roll rate at times during its display.
the other extraordinary thing about it is its sustained turn rate. There were times during that display when the aircraft would come straight in towards us and uh, it makes a lot of use of the intermediate display lines and the B-axis display line coming straight in towards the crowd at show centre. I remember one manoeuvre in particular, a pop-up attack, uh, where the aircraft popped up, rolled inverted on the B-axis uh, and I thought, surely this is uh, going to bust the display line. There's no way it's going to pull round onto the 230 metre line. Um, and lo and behold, it did just that. So I, I gather that uh, Andy down on camera two has been following the A400M all the way back to Bry's, as I uh, said should be possible, and I'm scanning the tree line to see if I can pick him up. Yeah, the aircraft probably on final approach and in uh, one minute's time will be on the ground following one of the shortest flights that crew will have done for a while, I'm sure. There's no particular activity going on at the moment, although there's still a, a relatively large pool of aircraft, including some quite interesting and, uh, and rare ones behind us, yet to depart or even yet to, to show any real signs of life at the moment, actually, in some cases. Uh, so just wondering, um, Andrew, do we have any of those um, pre-recorded packages ready to play out at the moment? Ian would like to intro it. Ian is coming up here, I would take that to mean. Well, that'll help me full time, if nothing else. Here he comes. How is it down there? It's very nice down there. Um, and I, I, I didn't mean to say I, need, I wanted to intro it on the basis that I thought that you couldn't introduce a piece, of, a piece of video, which you're perfectly capable of doing. But I just wanted to say um, what a wonderful job Adam's been doing, you know, to guide you through the day whilst on camera and giving the level of detail that you have been doing. I hope you've been enjoying it. And not oh, only I have tactics. been enjoying it, yeah. Good. And a fine day to be doing it too. Exactly. Unfortunately, not the whole weekend was fine as it, as it has been today. I had some challenges with weather. But I've just managed to put together a bit of a highlights video of all the material that the Plains TV team's been recording throughout Air Tattoo, all the arrivals, enjoy the show weekend proper, and I'd like to share that with you now. Some 
a little go- a little um, taste of some of the material the guys have been recording this weekend. It's been an absolute pleasure covering the show. We've got plenty more action come to come here live for uh, departures. But if you would like to see the full edited program, that will be released on the subscription service at watch.planestv.com. And because we got a thousand likes earlier, we have uh, flicked on the coupon code. Uh, that is DEP, that's capital D, capital E, capital P, 23. And if you use that coupon code to subscribe on the subscription service at watch.planestv.com, you'll get 20% off your first three months. You can sit down, watch back all the flying action from the weekend just gone, and in a few months' time, enjoy the edited highlights of that program. Now, we have been covering air shows for 30 plus years, and much of that archive is available on that subscription service too. I'm sort of doing nervous glances around to see if there's any aircraft taking off, nothing imminent. <laughs> And one of those programs, um, just a few years ago, just five, gosh, five years ago now, the RAF 100 um, air show here at Air Tattoo. Um, that's another show that really sticks in my memory as being a pretty spectacular event. And I wanted to share that highlights with you as well, just to give you a sense of some of the other archive that we have available on the service, if you did want to subscribe. So a little flashback now to RIAT 2018. if Andrew can find it. This is the big one. The international public celebration of RAF 100. The centenary of the establishment of the Royal Air Force on the 1st of April, 1918. The Royal International Air Tattoo 2018. way to celebrate the first 100 years of your Royal Air Force. This is the greatest air show on earth. So a little taste there of the Royal Air Force's 100th anniversary air show here at Air Satu. Um, I bet you Adrian's watching back the stream or something. I can hear an echo in my ear, which is quite off-putting. Um, the F4, someone in the chat was asking about the F4 here. We are still waiting, we are still waiting for departures. I can hear APUs running up. I can see aircraft still in the static there. Aircraft being towed back there. So there's there's enough going on to um, make me think, you know, we'll keep the stream going for a good long while yet to capture all of these departures. I see nav lights flashing over the far side by the F4, but not the F4 itself. That's looking a little bit um, like they've called it a day. Although I can't see anything over by the aircraft at the moment. Would be nice to capture that again, wouldn't it? Um, aircraft taxiing behind us. It's a bit tricky because I've been so glued to my computer, I haven't got very good awareness as to what's actually gone and what's still here. Other than the bits and pieces I can see, I can see a. Um, Looks like a USAF VIP aircraft. I can just see a tail. I can see a C-17 tail behind. And it looks like A-330. Let's 
the little corners of bits of aircraft. And we've got... What is it? P8. Ah, yes. Some big clouds bubbling up around in the vicinity. Looks like a good day for gliding, if a little windy actually. I'll take that back. So I'm using the um, movement sheet here alongside the little corners of aircraft that I can still see. Now is that a mock-up F-35? I think it is. We saw the uh, mock-up um, red arrow disappearing earlier. That's one of my shots of the day actually, the, the plastic red arrow disappearing on the back of a low loader transitioning into a tornado takeoff. That was a bit of a classy one. C-21, that might well have been what I saw uh, back there, which is now taxied out possibly going to end up down the 09 end for a backtrack. It's a bit of a stiff crosswind actually, it's fairly, it's pretty well directly, not directly across the runway, but um, probably uh, going to require a backtrack and um, take off on the 27 runway. So MRA1, MRA1 has taken off just. So C-17 is listed, Stratotanker and Stratotanker times to oh the Metria aircraft has that gone already can't quite see those behind the uh, marquees behind me and Weatherbird due to go 430 that's 20 minutes and two Gripen as well have we still got Gripens on the deck I can't see them but that doesn't mean they're not going to, and we are. We also have PC-21, which I'm sure departed earlier, and a PC-12 as well. Uh, there, yeah, I think that's already gone. And then the last departure, listed here at 10 to 5, being the Navajo from 2XL. And um, I can see B-52 on the deck, and we know that that's not departing today, unfortunately but some lovely material from Sunday of that aircraft's uh, takeoff, uh, its uh, uh, fly-throughs, and also a landing and a really nice demonstration of the aircraft's crabbing, backtracking down the runway. One of the uh, outrigger wheels hanging off the side of the runway, and um, let's see if we've repaired the runway lights. I can see lots of runway lights. Uh, yeah, uh, certainly the debris has been cleared up, but uh, yeah, taking some runway lights out there. As I'm told, and I'm told that's a fairly common occurrence. 
certainly um, been mentioning seeing that at Milton Hall back in the day. It's funny how we're drawn to talk about Milton Hall. I am too. It was quite a event if anyone's old enough to remember the air shows, uh, air fates at Milton Hall. We do have a programme on our archive and on the subscription service called Best of Milden Hall. You haven't got a clue what we're talking about and want to get an idea of what air shows at UK USAF military sites look like in the 90s. That's about as good as it's going to get. It was one of those events that took, brought together in a similar way to Air Tattoo does. Brought together lots of um, sort of allied forces, NATO forces. And with and lots of things like, you know, your MiG twenty nines from Germany, Poland. I'm trying to think what other classic stuff was in there, but it does start out with a nice bit from the very late eighties of the Blackbird. And there's even a shot of me on there actually. Hanging on a um metal fence watching or well, not watching but enjoying the sight of a blackbird sat on the deck. So I have seen that thing fly, but I do not remember. I'm young enough not to. I'm rabbiting on about um, Mildenhall at the moment and enjoying or not, not remembering seeing blackbirds flying. Oh. Adam's just appeared over my shoulder filling him in on uh, how sidetracked I've got from the uh, present action. <laughs> <laughs> Although you do run out. Although, OK. Got the weather bird uh, taxiing out behind us. That would be excellent to see. And that's the only shot that didn't make it into the, that highlights video. I feel like I will make use of the word weather on the tail of an aircraft at some point during the uh, edited programme. I should say we, because Adam's going to be... Uh, prepping a bit of a running oh. order for that and scripts very shortly actually. I'll write Ben a line of narration that refers to the weather so you can use your weather bird shot. Thank you. Now who's is this Czech Air Force C295? If I haven't done already, I do need to say a big thank you to the rest of the team. We've got Andy on wide-angle camera at the moment. Adrian, who started this company and uh, has kept it going all these years. He's been often on wide camera and um, he's, he's also the only person who's made me a coffee this weekend. So that if I didn't like a rather own, pointed remark, the way you gave me the side eyes while saying that. Well, if I didn't love him enough already, you know, <laughs> he's my old man, uh, if that wasn't already clear. And uh, yeah, he's uh, been the one to be putting, popping the kettle on occasionally, which is a bit of a challenge finding time for sometimes. All acting as runner when we are when we don't have any other responsibilities, but uh, those opportunities being few and far between during yes. a busy air setting. Someone just asking uh, whether the Spangdalem F-16s have taken off yet. Yes, they have done. Um, they gave us a very entertaining departure at, around the same time as the pair of um, F-15s. Also, well, the F-15s from Lakenheath, um, but also from the US Air Forces in Europe. And um, yeah, that uh, trio. In fact, all the US Air Force aircraft have given us some entertaining departures. The F-35s from Lakenheath snapping straight to the vertical at the end of the runway. That was pretty exciting and 
perhaps slightly predictably, not to take anything away from your comment, Paula, but perhaps slightly predictably, my uh, little chat about Milton Hall has reminded Paula about the very important Milton Hall burgers, <laughs> which are which were legendary. Oh gosh, now I'm hungry again. I have eaten lunch today. Don't always manage that, but uh, yeah, sadly no Milton Hall burgers here at Ayrton but wonderful food nonetheless. <laughs> Farnborough, wow. Some interesting comments there. It's, it's a shame not to be able to... Um, I need like a, one of those clever... What's the horrible um, Apple thing they've, uh, they're have going to release with the... Uh, you know, the AR glasses. Um, augmented reality glasses. Where you can have... I can yeah. get to this, okay. So we're stood here. Are we going to libel got, anyone here? We, no. Because no. we, did, we did open this with the horrible Apple thing. Did we? Yes. <laughs> did we? Yes. What was that? <laughs> no, you just said. Oh, I don't, what I'm saying yeah, now. Yeah. I thought I'd snagged them off already. No, the uh, Vision Pro. Um, imagine having that on. So your full awareness of what you're shooting on camera, but also chat going on the side. Yes. And perhaps uh, yes. I'd have big big bold in the corner my stream health just to make sure that everything was um, pushing out happy and merry it could get quite head spinning but not that it isn't already yeah it would be quite nice to keep an eye on the chat more than we are, have been well, doing yes. think, how, but, how, how many screens do we need one for the chat one for the schedule one for ADSB exchange not multiple screens Adam just one pair of goggles so you look really daft that are even more daft than up here on the roof yeah, I think I can see a use for it anyway I'd rather that than what they showed on the video, which was a father sat in his living room with the Vision Pro on whilst interacting with his kid, recording them. <laughs> Take your goggles off, <laughs> father, you know. <laughs> Pretty terrible. Anyway, so, uh, very, very sidetracked again. Spot anything in the chat? Yes, F16's gone. Yeah, and lots of people got the uh, intel on the B-52s going on Wednesday by the sound of it. So sad to miss. Uh, we've still got two on the deck, haven't we? Yes. Yep. One in, uh, one south of us in the static display and another yep. one we can just see the nose poking out on the north side and we've shown it uh, quite a lot of times over the course of the broadcast. Now it looks like Adrian's managed to log, on, log into the Planes TV account. I can see him <laughs> popping up in the chat as Planes TV. This could be uh, dangerous. <laughs> But happy to say that we we're like very likely to be covering air, the Scottish Air Show. Um, very likely, fingers crossed. And one of the yeah, you've talked a little bit about the shows we are covering. So we've got uh, Old Buckingham in it a couple of weeks. Yeah, let's run through the whole schedule. Okay, as okay. far as we can. So there's old there's old Buckingham. Well, and prior to that, we have the flying the day at flying Duxford. Day. Uh, the, the, the American themed flying day. What's that? What's he asking me to do? Uh, he's asking me to shelter myself from the wind. It has got breezy up here, so forgive the wind noise on the mics. Um, Adam now <laughs> adding wind Acting block as a wind to break, one, yeah. of his <laughs> one of my many jobs. Yeah. Um, doing that as well as you're doing all the others. Thank you, Adam. Um, yeah, we've got that Duxford flying day on the Friday. Short flying display, but they're really a lot of fun and had a nice chat with Ben Donnell at the end of the show yesterday trying to... Um, enhance the production value of those a little bit with um, the opportunities that they do present because they are a fairly relaxed day a bit of extra time perhaps to go and uh, have a chat with people get some interviews and and those sorts of things so make sure you're subscribed on youtube we'll be doing that uh, what week on friday and then the saturday sunday after that we'll be over at old buckingham by some minor miracle we will uh, cover both of those in the space of 12 <laughs> hours um so that's a two-day show and a wonderful venue and fantastic to see that the Red Arrows are flying at Old yeah. Buckingham this year. Yeah. That's going to be quite a sight. They have a headliner on one day and on the other day it's the uh, Norwegian Air Force Historical Squadron Vampire that we saw departing earlier on in the Italian markings. Fantastic. And now I have to rack my brains about what comes next. So we will have more Ducks for Flying Yes, days. there's another one in... There's late there, August. There's the evening one in late August. Hmm. The Flying Evening. Yes. And that's always lovely. It was beautiful last year. If you catch the um, weather right at, at an evening show like that, you know, the sun's a little lower, perhaps the wind's a little lower, making all of our lives easier, not least the uh, uh, 
the air assets themselves, the aircraft themselves. And we um, always talk about light at air shows. The wonderful thing about an evening show is there's no such thing as bad light. And once it's that time in the evening, it doesn't matter if the sun is right in front of you or right behind you. It's doing something amazing. So we're very much looking forward to that very end of August. But as we come into September, things get crazy busy again. So August, there might be other bits and pieces we pick off in August. Those are under discussion. Um, but September does get very busy again. We will go out to Jersey. That's a fabulous display. Might get some amazing aircraft over from the continent and elsewhere. And the Royal Air Force are always very supportive of the event. And, so, and the pick of the civilian acts that we see in the UK tend to get a uh, welcome invitation to Jersey. So that will be a wonderful show. And then that weekend we'll be covering NATO days as we always do. And alongside NATO days over the same two days, we'll be broadcasting on the streaming service the Duxford Battle of Britain Air Show at September, which as I was mentioning during arrivals, this is the, the sort of premier warbird event at Duxford now with skies full of Spitfires, Hurricanes, the wonderful finale there, the Duxford Big Wing, bringing together very many uh, yeah, Spitfires and, um, and of course an awful lot of other acts that, I'll be honest, I haven't, uh, haven't popped onto the Duxford website recently to uh, see exactly what, but it does always bring together some excellent UK and um, sometimes overseas warbird participants and the RAF supporting Ducks for September pretty well this year as well I believe Red Arrows are uh, due at that show just like to uh, acknowledge something I've seen in the chat uh, which actually goes back to a question I asked about three hours ago I'm so glad someone remembered that I asked it um, I was speculating on what aircraft might have won the award for the best paint scheme and I'm informed that it was the Italian Air Force U-208 uh, in the Aeronautica oh, Militare yes, okay. 100th anniversary scheme and uh, I said my favourite was Dana Brog but I think that's a worthy, a worthy winner especially in the context yeah. of the Italian's anniversary yes and an aircraft not not been here before, as I, as I understand. Oh, it. that's what Peter, who was uh, escorting me around the site on the Thursday, he he had an extra skip in his step as he dug his camera out and leapt towards that aircraft to grab a picture because of that reason. So we've got the uh, US Air Force KC one thirty five R Strato tanker, part of our. Um, Sky Tanker theme. We saw one of these aircraft in the flying display yesterday performing a single fly pass. One fairly of our sole closely followed. Sorry. Fairly closely followed by the B 52. Yes, nice that's right. That. Although uh, the B 52 was um, a little bit higher, if I remember rightly. You remember rightly because your knees still ache from uh, getting low enough to get the camera up there. Yes. But one pod to see nonetheless. Yeah, the higher things go, the harder life gets for us. And I remember actually it was the master that provided one of the most difficult moments. It does a fantastic manoeuvre, um, slow pass straight into a 360 degree minimum radius turn, building energy into a vertical eight, which is half a loop, half a roll, and then another half loop on top of that. And uh, I knew it was coming. So during that 360 turn, gradually lowering myself down until I was fully on my knees on the ground, kneeling in the wet grass in order to make sure I could catch it. It's one of the few moments in the solo displays that I'm always, I'm not going to say I'm always ready for, but um, I've been, um, I've learned the hard way to be ready for that yes. one because it can catch you unawares. Yeah. Oh, it's hard work. Because you don't, do not expect it, the performance of that aircraft, no. allowing it to no. complete a vertical manoeuvre like that and then go again. These are big, heavy, cumbersome cameras on big, heavy, cumbersome tripods. And, you know, they, they're great in many ways, but tracking aircraft in manoeuvres like that, it does become <laughs> near impossible unless you know what is going to happen before it happens. And you can kind of set your legs up accordingly.
So I can see the weather bird off to our right hand side, the WC-130J, which is part of uh, the Hercules family specifically configured for weather reconnaissance. The first WC-130, which was not a J model, I should add, uh, entered service in 1962, and its purpose was to take atmospheric samples following Russian nuclear weapons tests. Their capabilities have been expanded since then, so the latest version, the WC-130J, which entered service in 1999, is operated by the 53rd Weather Reconnaissance Squadron, the Hurricane Hunters, and they use it to track and research tropical cyclones and hurricanes in an effort to enhance prediction and forecasting. And they fly right within the eye of the storm, usually at about 10,000 feet, gathering data and uh, increasing the accuracy of that uh, hurricane forecasting by up to 30%. This is the Metria tanker, is it? It's the Metria KC-135 backtracking. So we've already talked a little bit about this aircraft, um, but just to remind anyone who has forgotten, or perhaps anyone who's joined us, since we saw it leave its parking position, what we're looking at is a third-hand aeroplane. It served with the US Air Force, then the Republic of Singapore Air Force, retired in 2019 from Singaporean service and replaced with the A330 multi-role tanker transport, and now serving with uh, this American civilian company, Metria, but working with uh, the likes of the US Navy, the US Navy doesn't have dedicated tankers of its own, so uh, it relies quite heavily on buddy-buddy refueling for the fast jet fleet, but like the P-8 Poseidon, uh, this aircraft can be utilised. It conducted the world's first civilian rigid boom air-to-air -air refueling mission relatively recently, and that was a, a US Navy Poseidon that acted as the receiver aircraft there. I quite like the paint scheme that it's been painted up. It was plain grey in Singaporean service, but now wearing this subtle camouflage to just break up the shape a little bit against a, a cloudy sky. It's very likely a an airframe that I've seen before. It's, uh, I suspect I've probably seen all the Singaporean KC-135s at various points, especially those that soldiered on right to the end of their operational lives. Yeah, I did uh, spot an email earlier um, about an aircraft we're expecting to arrive here at Fairford later. So as the Metria KC-135 departs to our left, we've got the Weatherbird to our right, lining up on the runway. It looks uh, to the naked eye very much like a standard Cer uh, Hercules, and that's because on the outside, in most respects, it is one. The equipment is largely palletized, much like the YEC-27 Jedi that I was mentioning earlier, the uh, electronic warfare version of the C-27. And that means uh, this can be a dual-role aircraft palletized equipment can be easily installed in the cargo hold but should it be needed for another purpose it can be removed in a matter of hours and uh, redeployed on for example uh, conventional transport duties.
a hugely important aircraft, particularly in the American Southeast, where the forecasting data that it provides helps to inform the evacuation orders that are put in place as a hurricane is uh, shortly to make landfall. And I don't know if you can possibly put a number on, on, on the number of lives that this aircraft will have saved and its predecessors uh, over the years, but certainly uh, minimising the disruption for areas that aren't going to get hit now don't need to be evacuated because of the accuracy of the forecasting at the same time um, making sure that those areas that are vulnerable uh, do get properly prepared We've got a C-17 from the United States Air Force Air Mobility Command shortly to enter the runway. It looks like we're going to get the C-21 departing first. This is an aircraft that was here on static display.
So now taxiing onto the runway, we've got the uh, C-17A Globemaster III from the 701st Airlift Squadron based at Charleston Air Force Base in South Carolina. And this is uh, part of an incredible C-17 fleet, 157 C-17s operated by the US Air Force from 16 different bases across the United States. The first aircraft were delivered to Charleston in 1993 and it was cleared for operational use in 1995. This is an aircraft with extraordinary carrying capacity. It's capable of carrying nearly all of the US Army's air portable assets, up to and including the Abrams main battle tank. And during the 2021 uh, evacuation of Afghanistan, a single US Air Force C-17 evacuated 823 people in a single flight by strapping them to the floor of the aircraft. That act of heroism earned the crew the Distinguished Flying Cross. I do want to explain some of the noises that you'll be hearing, by the way, uh, over the course of this broadcast. The site here is in teardown mode, so uh, you would have heard briefly a moment ago the sound of a forklift truck reversing um, with its beeper carrying pallets of chairs from the hospitality chalets. There it goes again. Um, obviously, there's nothing we can do about that. That is just the soundtrack of uh, the airfield here at Fairford today. But everyone's eager to get this packed down and get home again after what has been, at times, a cold, wet and rainy and windy weekend. Very pleasant now. But, you know, as is always the way, the best weather was for arrivals and departures. Oh, so often seems to be the case. Very impressive tactical departure from the C-17. Not just for show, but uh, very much useful in uh, combat operations for evading ground threats, the ability to get high as fast as possible. And that could help the aircraft to evade small arms fire or portable shoulder-mounted surface-to-air missiles, for example. There's Andy down on our wide-angle camera. On uh, what is becoming an increasingly... Uh, well, it's turning into a building site, but in reverse. But 
uh, yeah, in a, in a week or so's time, this will be a bog standard operational military airbase once again, hosting a detachment of U 2. Occasionally, bomber detachments based here. The B 52 is a relatively familiar site here, not just visiting uh, for the air show. Well, in this occasion, these specific aircraft are just visiting for the air show, but we've had B 52s visiting here uh, relatively recently, earlier this year, uh, on operational deployment. Only a few weeks ago we had a squadron of B-1s temporarily basing here. That was uh, as part of uh, Air Warrior, the big NATO exercise over mainland Europe. So a little bit of activity around the Greek F-4E Difficult to make out what sort of activity, but the uh, canopy is certainly up. That might indicate the intention to fly it again. Um, we don't know. Chances are that you at home will probably hear what uh, the plan is before we do, but as far as we know, it took off heading for home and then encountered some kind of air traffic control problem en route and uh, returned to us at Fairford. And it would seem uh, logical to assume that they want to get the aircraft back home today and We'll file the new flight plan, put some more fuel in it, and then head back. Make another attempt to, to take off, and we can't complain about that, because F4 action is all very welcome indeed. So we have uh, some intriguing noises from behind us, and I think we've established that the Royal Saudi Air Force, I can see it. Let's swing the camera around over that way and catch the Royal Saudi Air Force Airbus A330 multi-role tanker transport. This is one of six MRTTs operated by the RSAF. They entered service in 2013. Unlike the RAF's Voyagers, which are based on the same airframe, Saudi Arabia's A330 MRTTs are fitted with a refueling boom in addition to the Drogue system. That is because uh, their A330s need to refuel both tornadoes and typhoons, which use the hose and drogue method of refueling, uh, but also F-15s and other A330s, and they use the boom method of refueling. RAF a330s in comparison are only required to refuel typhoons and f-35s uh, and in both of those cases the uh, hose and drogue method can be utilized the f-35a used by the united states air force that has um, uh, a receptacle for the boom method of refueling as do pretty much all aircraft designed to u.s air force requirements but the f-35b was designed to u.s marine corps and Royal Air Force requirements, and uh, they both have a preference for the hose and drogue system. This is the Riyadh debut of a Saudi A330 multi-role tanker transport, and it's here in part to support the participation of the Saudi Hawks, who we saw departing earlier this morning. So a good look there at the uh, boom that I mentioned, the rigid boom used to refuel the F-15 and other A330s and then appearing just behind it you'll see that pod on the underside of the wing and that is the uh, pod used for hose and drogue based refueling, trailing a basket on the end of a very long pipe, flexible pipe. Which is the better method? Well they both have pros and cons. 
The uh, main advantage of the boom method of aerial refueling is the far higher fuel transfer rate, and that is particularly de desirable when refueling large aircraft like other A330 MRTTs, which need to take an awful lot of fuel. Uh, it's also uh, arguably easier for the pilots because all they have to do is hold station. There is a separate boom operator who controls the movement of that boom using aerodynamic control surfaces uh, on the end of it. So they have the hardest job in, in many respects. Uh, the disadvantages, well, it's a rigid boom, you don't want to hit it, whereas the flexible hoses are a little bit less lethal if you do get it wrong. There's also a bit more flexibility uh, in a number of different ways with the hose and drogue method. Uh, number one, you can refuel more aircraft at any one time. If you've got a hose on each wingtip and another one under the centre line of the tanking aircraft, uh, then you can actually refuel three aircraft at once, or more likely two aircraft at once. But hypothetically, you could refuel three aircraft at once. Um, that's very handy if you've got a large fleet of fighters that all need to take fuel. Um, another big advantage, it needs fewer crew. You don't need to have that dedicated boom operator. You don't need to make substantial modifications to the aircraft because those pods that you see under the wings of the A330, they can be relatively easily installed on pretty well anything. And the... Um, Uh, the other big advantage of the hose and drogue method is that uh, you can use it to refuel fighters between each other. So if you have two Super Hornets, for example, or two Rafales, you can uh, put a buddy tank uh, and hose and drogue system on the underside of the centre line of that aircraft and you can use it as a force multiplier even without needing dedicated tanker aircraft. That's what the US Navy primarily use uh, and the French Navy as well. Neither have dedicated tankers uh, and they instead install these buddy buddy refuelling kits which we saw demonstrated by the um, German tornadoes uh, on Saturday as part of their uh, sky tanker display. I gather I genuinely didn't expect this to happen, but I gather someone has, genu has genuinely answered my call for uh, spotting tips for the Juno and Jupiter. We'll get to that in just a second, um, after the Saudi A330 has departed. So for anyone who wasn't with us earlier on, we had three RAF helicopters departing from the right-hand end of the runway, about a mile away from where we are, and I was able to identify them as either Junos or Jupiters, or more likely a mix, but I couldn't uh, give any more specific information than that. And uh, someone has emailed in with tips, which I think I'm about to get fed into my headset by Ian. This is an ex-observer from the Royal Observer Corps, and thank you, Michael. The Jupiter has a finlet under the tail rotor, four side windows, and it is bigger. The Juno has no finlet, three side windows, the back one is tiny. And I'll take a tip on the Avenger as well, please, which I mainly identify from the absence or not of a roundel. Um, but go on, let's have an Avenger tip. I did spot that. I... 
<laughs> yeah, okay. So Michael's pointing out that there was a very obvious radome on the bottom, which I did spot. What threw me, I, I thought it was an Avenger as it lined up. I was you know, 99% certain because of that radome. And then something about it as it moved down the runway, there wasn't a roundel where I expected them to be one. And for a moment, I forgot the radome and panicked and just went, oh no, it's a normal King Air. Um, and about uh, three seconds later, realised my mistake after I'd been muted as the aircraft went past. Um, but distracted myself so much with that internal debate that I kind of forgot to film it properly. Anyway, we have, going back to the, the live action, we've got the rather sad sight of um, the sea fire being pushed across the runway over to the opposite side of the airfield where there seems to be a quite a collection of aircraft that have either been unable to depart as planned or possibly suffered technical difficulties. Um, the Portuguese TB30 Epsilons are over there. We've got the F4 that departed and then returned quite soon afterwards. There's a C295 which was towed over that way as well. Let's hope nothing seriously wrong and it'll be uh, back on its way after a, a little bit of work. Maybe not today, but in the next few days anyway. I am going to have to try and remember that. I mean, Juno and Jupiter, which was the larger one? I remember Finlet, number of windows, three stroke four, but I can't remember. Was it... The Juno, the Jupiter was the bigger one Correct. with four windows. Four right. windows, fin that under the tail boom, and the Juno smaller with three windows. The real one is yes. tiny, and it's the smaller aircraft. Yes, yes, okay, okay. So you know, I might even remember that, having laboured this point now. We so rarely see them that we will have to wait until REAT 2024 to discover when it, whether any of that has actually gone into my head yeah. but um, spend some time I shall in the try. fields of Shropshire <laughs> <laughs> I shall try but I'm not desperate to go spotting Junos and Jupiters just for the sake of drilling into my head which one is which it's research <laughs> so not much more to go we have a Navajo I take it the 2XL Navajo hasn't gone I haven't Whilst noticed I've been it. At the PC. Could well have happened while I was uh, downstairs having an egg sandwich, but what else do we have still to go? The Italian KC 767 is still here. It's probably the largest aircraft still on the airfield that we know is definitely due to go today. Yeah. And the Saab Grippens, they went ages ago, didn't they? Yeah. All the Grippens have gone. And I can't actually see the KC 767 listed. No, so perhaps a departure for another day. Yeah, in which case we uh, we might pretty much have come to the end of things unwittingly. I think so. I think given that we can't see the Navajo or hear any evidence of uh, that aircraft departing, um, worth pointing out that our focus uh, here is on live broadcasting the action of Air Tattoo and it's the aircraft involved in Air Tattoo that we will be bringing you live here. Um, that's our focus and uh, that's probably where it ends so thank you everybody <laughs> I just saw someone point out in the chat that it's been an eight hour broadcast and we didn't uh, that's, expect that this morning well, that's on the shorter end of our live streams <laughs> right to this week so we did a couple of 10 hours on the arrivals days last week these are long productions it's a challenge to do and it's taken the determined effort of a team of seven guys who I've said thank you to, but big thanks to, again to Adam, Adrian, Andy, Andrew, Lee and Ben uh, for all their hard, uh, hard effort in uh, challenging conditions. Um, it's, it's not been pretty at times and there's been some soggy footwear and uh, uh, yeah, but they've, uh, they've done a sterling job and I hope you agree and do give the video a like if you've enjoyed it and do consider subscribing to the subscription service, PTV On Demand. Yeah. Let's do one last plug of the uh, yeah. discount code. We really should do. I mean, you know, it, it, it's a great service. It's got a, um, and the more support, the more support, the more customers, frankly, we have of that service the more encouragement there is to go back through some of that archive and there are, is some there are some absolute gems there and it gives us the resource we need to produce what I hope has been a, um, a good production here at Air Tattoo. 
So with that, I'll say thank you very much for tuning in. Thank you, Adam, for all of your sterling effort today and filling in as the camera operator and giving us all the detail of uh, the aircraft on static display departing here today. I hope you've enjoyed it. I very much have. I've enjoyed the whole week, even the wet bits. And we'll look forward to seeing you at a, again at a live broadcast soon. Do subscribe. We'll be live in just a couple of weeks' time from Duxford and Old Buckingham. And we've got more action to come both here on YouTube and on the subscription service. The discount code you'll write is DEP23. That's D-E-P-2-3. Use that at watch.planestv.com. To subscribe, you'll get 20% off your first three months. The idea being that gives you a chance to enjoy the back catalogue and also watch the really the edited program of Royal International Air Tattoo 2023. Lots of onboard material and bits and pieces behind the scenes and close up with the aircraft, which I'm sure you'll enjoy. So thank you very much everybody for tuning in. We'll see you again soon. Bye bye. bye, -bye.